Police interceptors. Police! The pride of the northeast. Lock your protection motor vehicle. Yeah, it's been run. And scourge of the criminal class. We are high, man! Open the door now! Hand out! Hand out! Hand out! We're up close and personal with Durham and Cleveland's crime-fighting elite. In pursuit... Off-road. Lethal list. And in the air. We've got a group of five runners, five runners Nation Road now. With their crack firearms team... Oh, please! Out! ..and formidable dog unit... Stand still, please, do ..in the trenches... ..for the war on crime. Strap in. I am in pursuit. You're riding with the interceptors. They'll be filling the pants. Stay there! We'll be filling the cells. He's come back round. Coming up, a getaway car's escape doesn't go to plan. The big out is smoking, and I think he's losing power. Crash, crash, crash. <laughs> Jimmy has an unwanted passenger. Get out of your car, there's a dog in the back of there. Get out, now! Okay. Right? You all right, fella? And the disturbance has a shocking conclusion. Oi! Oi! Calm yourself down! Calm yourself down! Burglaries in Durham and Cleveland have been on the increase. And there's one particular type of break-in that's seen a marked rise. Contact with him, contact with him. The two-in-one. Get out! Get out! Get out! Go! 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 A two-in-one burglary is one, it's a burglary. And the second crime is committed as a theft of motor vehicle. Therefore, you've got two crimes. Ultimately, they're into one because they've burgled your house um, in order to get to commit the other crime. Put it down! Get on the floor! It's happening more than ever now. It's criminals. They'll take the easy option. They'll just come along, they'll try your door. If your door is unlocked, they will be in within seconds, and the first thing they will go for is a set of keys for a car. It's 11pm in Middlesbrough. But not everyone is tucked up in bed. Second exit, continuing straight on Martin Road. Officers in the Grove Hill area are in pursuit of a stolen black BMW and a white Audi being driven in convoy. Both going left off road towards Castle Way, but you just can go in. The getaway drivers are suspected of being part of a professional burglary gang responsible for a string of two in ones in the Middlesbrough area. But they don't seem that keen to face justice. And dog handler Mo Rashad is catching up with the pursuit in case the suspects decide to ditch and run. 485, the dog's required anywhere of this. Yes, yes. Mo has been a cop for 10 years. He's following in his father's footsteps. And just like his old man, he loves catching the bad guys. These intruders have got into somebody's house and taken these keys, and uh, it's absolutely uh, massively important we get these chaps. Couple of wards, uh, Keith Road now. Back with the pursuit, the stolen cars are booting it through residential streets, doing their best to shake off the cops. Both still together, speed is 4 0. 40 turns to 70. This pursuit is becoming dangerous. A crash at this speed could be fatal. What's the van doing? Get out of the way, please. No change in the conditions. Traffic is still light. Pedestrians is still light. Although the streets are quiet, the suspect's driving is becoming increasingly desperate. Straight over. It seems they'll do anything to escape. Uh, cutting through and they're going on a Keith Road and a reset back towards the right, right, right onto Deepdale. The interceptors are trying to keep the chase confined to the Grove Hill area and away from the town centre. We've got a right, right, right. We need units to Bob Assault's Gill Avenue. We need units to top on Ladgate Lane, please. But five minutes into the chase, 
the fleeing felons up the ante by parting ways. Where's he going? He's gone left at Martin Road. The white Audi has gone left Martin Road. We are behind the uh, BMW right. gate. With other units following the white Audi, the lead car remains with the black Beamer. The pursuit is now only a mile away from the town centre. We are heading towards town here. If it heads in that direction, the police will be forced to call it off. But the suspect takes a left away from town. And after seven minutes of thrashing the Beamer, the car's given up the ghost. The engine's smoking, so I think he's going to lose his car. The suspect hoped it would be the interceptors, not his engine, that gave up. Mo is closing in, but before he can join the pursuit, the fleeing car flies through a junction. The BM is smoking, I think he's losing power. Crash, crash, crash. <laughs> The getaway driver crashes into the back of a passing motorist and the interceptors make a tactical hit. But the suspect's not hanging around to swap details. The officer is hot on his heels and the suspect soon in cuffs. Where are we trying to get over there? Just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know my way about there, you know. The driver of the blue Honda was shaken and suffered minor injuries. With one burglary bandit behind bars, the interceptors now turn their attention to his suspected accomplice, the driver of the white Audi, and Mo has some intel. So we've got information to say the uh, gentleman earlier from the two-in-one one burglary is in this address here, so we're going to act on that information as soon as we can. Everyone's here, we'll act and get it out. But will this lead to an arrest? Right, Here we go. Right. The interceptors have been involved in a high-speed pursuit of two stolen cars being driven in convoy near to Middlesbrough Town Centre. The way Audi has gone left Martin Road, we are behind the BMW And the BMW's escape plan soon comes crashing down. The BMW is smoking, I think it's losing power. Crash, crash, crash. <laughs> With the driver detained, the interceptors are now on the hunt for the suspected Audi driver. And Mo has a lead. So we've got information to say the uh, gentleman earlier from the two-in-one burglary is in this address here, so we're going to act on that information as soon as we can. Everyone's here. We'll act and get it out. With the team in position, they're going in. Right. Number two, yeah. That's it. Hello, police. There's a man behind the sofa. Have we got him? Is it him? But is he playing hide and seek or hiding from the law? Yeah. yeah. The interceptors have the suspect. And a house full of coppers has the man reaching for his smokes. Why can't he have a smoke, right? Give him a rest. Well, I know I'm under arrest, but why can't he have a smoke? Because I'm taking care of I'm getting locked up. Why can't he have a smoke, like? Yeah. Right, no, get the bottle. I'll just put it in yeah, there. Yeah. Go and grab my rolly off the table, bring it straight out of the up. While smoking is a bad habit, it's the man's suspected habit of stealing the public's cars that means he's off to the nick for questioning. Absolute result. So we've caught the uh, guy behind these two and ones. Um, further evidence has been found in the address uh, linking them to the offences um, and I think together as a, t as a, t as a shift team uh, we've got them, so absolutely over the moon. The driver of the BMW was convicted of no insurance, no licence, theft of vehicles, dangerous driving and burglary. 
He was banned from driving for 47 months and received a total of three years and 10 months in prison. The man arrested in the house was taken back to prison on recall and is currently under investigation for burglary. No further action was taken in relation to driving the white Audi. Each time the interceptors head out to jobs where weapons are involved, they know the lives of the public and also their own could be on the line. There's more and more cases where you are coming across weapons, be it or concealed on people or in cars. Um, you've got to be on, be on your guard as best you can. It doesn't put me off. It just makes you want to catch people more. But ultimately, we're here to make a living. Yes, we want to catch people, but we all want to go home to our families at the end of the day uh, uninjured. It's the late shift, and Paul Jacko Jackson is on patrol in his BMW X5 when a call comes in about a disturbance in Bishop Auckland. Just had a job come in, a 999 call from comms. There's a male in the house who's threatening to slash his family up. We don't know if he's in possession of a knife of any description, um, but he certainly made the threats. Jacko's a highly trained firearms officer and received commendations for bravery. He'll certainly need lots of that tonight. I'm going to a house I've never been in before to deal with somebody I've never met before who might have a knife. So I've got to be quite cautious about how I approach that. You don't just pull straight in because somebody can be behind the door. You walk in, you get a knife in the back, um, which isn't ideal. With the incident ongoing, Jacko needs to get to the scene as soon as he can. The weather gets there first, his single crew, and they're going to be by themselves. But fortunately, the Royal Army and being on an armed response car, I've got a little bit more kit with us to help me out than colleagues on the Panda would have. So if there's going to be a cop getting there, single crew, it might as well be an armed cop. Hello, just pulling up on scene now. Jacko is first on the scene, and there's some alarming news over the radio. Apparently the male is now on the street threatening that he's going to slash police officers' throats. The suspect has allegedly threatened to kill cops, but with the occupants of the house potentially in serious danger, Jacko has no time to wait for backup. He needs to take action. Tango 3, two, did you receive? Come on scene. There are angry voices coming from the house, and Jacko has his taser drawn. Oh, are we doing you all right? Step out of the way for a second, love. You all right, fella? I'm telling you what. Have you got one you shouldn't have, mate? I'm telling you, mate. Jacko tries to talk the man down, but he's having none of it. Oh, Calm yourself I'm down now. About it, but... Don't mess around, otherwise you're going to get there again. Do you understand? With the suspect aggressive and not responding to instructions, Jacko has little choice but to taser him. Tasers are a less lethal option, delivering 50,000 volts, but the man will soon recover. Put your hands out in front of you and I'll hand off yet. Right, this moment in time, you're locked up on suspicion of threats to kill, possess an offensive weapon. OK, mate? You all right? Yeah, good to see you, man. Yeah. LA, one male detained. He has been tasered. Um, if I could have a cage for you. You all right? Yeah. Have you got a knife on you? No. I don't know where the keys are, but I'll take the head when I hit the stairs. All right. Well, we'll get you checked out if you need to be checked out, all right? But you I can't... When he runs it, we jack him, mate. I kill him. Well, I'll tell you what. You've got some barbs in you. They're just like little fishing hooks, all right? I can either leave them in or I can pull them out. It's quick like a cat. Cut Do you want us to pull them out? Cut the cables. I kind of cut the cables. Do you want us to pull them out? If you mind my French, when I swear, yeah, I don't mind. All right, don't If mind. he thought the taser was painful going in, One. it's also not great coming out. Two, all right, they're out. Me? Have you got a knife on you? No, that was not my keys. All right, you cannot be saying that you're going to slash cops' throats, OK? Backup arrives on the scene, so Jacko talks to the man's family to try to get to the bottom of what's gone on. How are we doing you all right? 
the incident is blamed on a combination of anger issues fueled by drink. I was going to cave his face in. It's been a shocking resolution to a tense episode, but with the situation potentially escalating, the taser was the right tool for the job. Put your hands out in front of you and I'll hang off you. Just a fantastic bit of kit. It's instantly incapacitated him. He's fallen to the ground and he's followed my instruction to the letter then. Put your hands out, you're handcuffed, you're under arrest. I haven't had to go hands on, I haven't had to risk getting hurt or him getting hurt. I haven't had to pepper spray him and affect everybody in the house. I've drawn my taser and it's, uh, it's had the desired effect instantly. Don't know what the interactions that family have with the son, um, but speaking to them, they're upset, they're visibly upset, the, the mother's crying. Apart from being distressed uh, and upset, they're in tears. They're quite fearful, they're quite frightened, so it can't have been a, a pleasant ordeal for them. Um, and the fact that it's took a cop to come in and fire a taser at the sun to buy them any sort of respite and keep them safe, that's quite a sad state of affairs. But in the short term, it means they're going to be fine overnight. Um, he'll be fine. If he needs any medical treatment, he'll get out at the police station. And with the man safely locked up in the van, it seems this isn't his first brush with the boys in blue. Right, you just sit tight. Apparently, according to local cops, it's not the first time we've been here. This is a fairly frequent occurrence. So unless they draw a line in the sand and say, enough's enough, you can't behave like this, he'll continue to do it. Right, you just sit tight. No further action was taken in regards to the threats to kill but he was cautioned for public order. Is it your car? Yeah. All right, it just uh, rings a bell for a job the other night. Each time the interceptors head out... Hello, mate, how are you doing? They never know what they're going to get. We're not... hey, don't give me the Vs. Or who's going to get involved. I'm talking to these, I'm busy dealing with these, all right? Get up, I don't care, get out my face. Things can escalate. I know what kids do, I'll see your kids go out there. Are you trying to intimidate me? Are you trying to wind us up? In a matter of seconds. Right, come here, you're locked up. You're locked up for section five, public order. I don't care. You want to go to a job and in your heart of hearts, you want it to be nice and neat, and dead straightforward and simple, but that seldom happens. More often than not, jobs will grow legs, and before you know it, you're dealing with something that you weren't expecting. But, like I say, the one thing to expect in this job is the unexpected. It's lunchtime in sunny Hartlepool. Single crew Jimmy Greaves has clocked a dodgy looking red VW. Looks like he's got a brake light out, and he's absolutely hammering it down this road, so try and make some ground and catch up with them. Jimmy served 13 years in the British Army, but the conflict today is about to take place on the suburban streets of this county Durham town. <laughs> Jimmy's putting his foot down to catch up with the VW, which has turned into a side road. The VW has been abandoned on the pavement by this gent. Come here. Give me your hands now. The driver was trying to flee. Come sit in the front of my car. And he's got an audience. Sit in the front of my car. Are you involved? The man's relation turns up. No. Just calm down. No, no! Don't worry, don't worry, don't you. Uh, Just go away. No, you've got it. Get out there. Bad move. Get out of their cars, the dog in the back of there. Get out now. Right? Leave him alone now. It's a tricky situation. Leave him alone. But Jimmy's convinced the man has something to hide. Right, I've just seen you get out of that car and run down this corner. Right? So what are you driving that car for? Are you allowed to drive that car? Let's do he some checks. Let's do some checks. He wasn't driving. Yes, he was. No, he wasn't. If you don't calm down, girl, you're going to get locked up. The woman begins to head off. After facing a mouthful of profanities, finally Jimmy gets some quality time with his suspect. Look, driver simple as that. The man denies driving the VW. Give us your phone now again. And with a crowd gathering. So I'm gonna get locked up the way you like, eh? For now. 
The lady takes advantage of Jimmy being on his own and enters the VW. Roger, could you see if there's a local unit uh, to come by with a van? Jimmy's missing none of it, and he heads down to investigate. What are you doing inside that vehicle? My, 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 getting my stuff out, my, my son's stuff right, out. Right, out you come just now. I'm, se I'm seizing this vehicle. I'm seizing this vehicle. Out you come now. Don't say I'm talking to you about him. Wait, or you'll get locked up. Don't say I'm talking to you about him. This is your last warning, all right? Next time you're getting locked up, all right? Jimmy returns to the suspected driver and radios for backup. But the woman isn't finished yet. You're not getting anything just now. Which way? Just well, I'll just take it. He's going to be getting breath tested first. It's an old smack in our Yeah, just to give me some assistance in the first instance. We've got oh, quite we'll a large group out. of people just uh, moving around outside here. Yeah. A lot of people. Oh, and two people, yeah. is it? This is a distraction Jimmy could do without. Why don't you just go over there until we're finished and I'll come and speak to you? No? Right. Because, like, you've got... Well, we don't know where we're going yet because we're going to do the checks. Another unit comes here. We're talking about Don't ever speak to you like that. Just because he's, just because he's in uniform. And because he's ex-army with a taser in his belt and a dog in the boot. Why don't you take your son in the house instead of bringing him out here so he's getting exposed to this? You can't tell me so what he, I do. So he doesn't you're have to stand dad. and watch it? You are not my dad. You can no, I'm not. You're right. Yeah, exactly. You're not my boss, all right? Well, I've not been able to deal with you because I've been too busy having to deal with her. Jimmy establishes that the man doesn't have a driving licence or insurance. I know you're the driver because I passed you on the other side of the road. And arranges to get the car seized. As the cavalry arrives, they need to secure the keys to the VW, but they're nowhere to be found. She's calmed down now, but she was kicking off a bit before, and I was trying to deal with him while she was kicking off, and I need to make sure the keys are secured from that car, and then she's took them out. Right, do you want me to try again? The lady denies taking the keys, and Jimmy's patience is wearing thin. Look, if you don't give us the keys... I'll lock that up for obstruct, please. I'll lock that up for obstruct, please. You're getting locked up for obstruct, please. Because you've took the keys out of that car, you're not giving them back. You were in, you were in that car. Come and sit in the back of this van. Get your hands off me, then. Come and sit in the back of this van. She's in the van to cool off. She's gone in and emptied the vehicle with stuff and took the keys, and now she won't tell me where they are. So I'll either drag that off there, which is potentially going to damage the road and damage other cars getting dragged off here, or it can be driven on the back of the truck. Either way, it's going. Seconds out, round two. Right, Leanne, shall we start again? You know what, I'm getting really Leanne, Leanne, shall we start again? Where's the keys for this car? I don't have them, search me. Well, where have you put them? I haven't had them on my three Well, you're going to get locked up then. Listen to me, on my three kids' lives and on my sister's... Sid, get... left them in the ignition, he told me. Well, he... You were the only person in that car. This is one broken record that no one wants to hear again. Right, you're getting locked up. Listen to me, Sage. No. Sage, Jimmy's uninsured driver was reported for driving without a licence and insurance. The lady who turned a routine stop into a total nightmare was given a caution for obstructing police. Still to come. Stay there now! Steve AD is out for an early morning run. Hello, I've got a runner up at Stanley if anyone's free. A suspect isn't convinced about the results of his drug wipe. That's coming up with, albeit a minor one, but a positive reading for cannabis, all right? That's not positive. Well, that's... And Halloween in Middlesbrough becomes less fright night, more fight night. Fight across the road, fight across the road. Interceptors are no strangers to speed, and when criminals try to leg it from the law, they put on the gas, whether it's behind the wheel... Subject vehicles just ahead of us. Slow, slow, slow. ..or on foot. Got one detained, got the driver. It's Saturday morning, and interceptor Steve Aidy is out looking for a wanted suspect. It's currently 8 o'clock in the morning, nice early start. Um, we'll see if we can get this lad in, if he's in. And if not, we'll go along for him. Despite the hour, Steve's up for an early jog if need be. He can run, you know, people do run away from us. Um, 
don't always get them first time, but the majority of the time, we get them. Steve's hobbies include fishing, so he knows a thing or two about reeling in slippery customers. You want to be as quick as you can over the first 100 metres, and really, it, it can be a war of attrition. We, we, we wear a lot of kit, and we're, you know, more often than not, we're actually older than the people that we're chasing. So there's distinct advantages. They're wearing their best Nikes, got tracksuits on. We were probably wearing about two stone worth of kit. Steve's journey to the suspect's house is cut short when a scruffy looking Cleo catches his eye. Because we're going to turn before he does. He's expecting the Cleo to be right behind him. He should have turned by now. The Cleo had been indicating to go down the same road as Steve, but it hasn't followed. Even though he's in an unmarked motor, Steve might have been clocked as a copper. Blue Cleo, which somehow managed to give us the slip, despite best efforts, um, he's obviously, for me, that immediately says he's done something wrong. I'm assuming he lives in the area, and if he's gone anywhere, he's going to be attempting to get back to wherever he lives. So. I, th I always think the best thing is just hang around the last place that you saw him. Steve continues to cruise around the main roads and five minutes later, his instincts prove spot on. The motor has reappeared. There he is there, man. By the time Steve's done a Yui, the Clio is long gone, but it's soon back in his sights. There he is, he's away. The driver's ditched his motor and is trying his luck on foot. And he's got a decent head start on Steve. I've got to run up and stand if anyone's free. Being late out of the blocks, Steve isn't sure which way the suspect has gone. Which way? But a passerby turns race marshal and points him in the right direction. Let me not fly local, please. The runner has disappeared through the trees and turned this sprint into the cross country. And Steve's going the distance. There he is. He spots this pace setter at the edge of the forest and starts closing the gap. Let me get me on my button. The runaway, clad in his finest sportswear, may have a weight advantage over Steve's cumbersome kit, but this interceptor's a thoroughbred. Steer there now! Get on the floor! The suspect is out of puff and has given up. Yeah, we've got him. <laughs> One to The runaway may have legged it off like a hare, but Steve has summoned his inner tortoise and eventually bagged his man. He banned. Oh, no. Are you banned. Oh, no. Wait, you run for the runner's got his breath back and is using it to give Steve some verbal. Oh. Uh, you're under arrest, mate. Oh. What, you running away from the police for them? Wait, what are you doing pumpers for? You got no licence. What are you driving for? Maybe because I, because I want to. All right. I want to lock you up then, don't I? Are you on lockdown anyways, aren't I? Huh? While he's fessed up to not having a licence, Steve reckons there's another reason for his bad Mo Farah impression and quickly whips out his drug wipe. Because you've committed a moving vehicle offence and the fact that you're driving without a licence, it gives me a power to um, subject you to a drug wipe, OK? This kit tests for cannabis and cocaine and those two drugs alone, OK? It's brand new, sealed. All right. You stick your tongue on, bud. Stick that further than that, mate. An unlicensed and potentially drugged-up driver is off the road, all because Steve had a funny feeling about the motor. Part of this job is... Um, using the, the copper snout, as it were, you know, it's, it's something that we, we finely tune over the years and you, you do get better at it. Um, you know, certain scenarios don't look right to you. Certain ones make you turn the car around, make you do a couple of checks. And like today, it just leads to something. And Steve's spidey sense has hit double top today with the drug wipe. Positive result for cannabis. So he's told us that he smoked some last night. Um, normally, that would indicate that it's still going to be in his system. Uh, a day, two days, three days, four days after he smoked it. So 
Um, we'll give the, the nurse a shout, we'll get some bloods from her, hopefully. A blood test will give definitive proof, as the line on the drug wipe is pretty faint. Right, Spatty, that's coming up with, albeit a minor one, but a positive reading for cannabis, all right? That's not positive, well, mate. Um, it is, yeah. all right. There's just no, just no. to the left of there's that no, line, yeah. there is a faint indication for cannabis, all right? There's no, there's so, at yeah. this point in time, you're there's under nothing, arrest. There's nothing even on them. You've seen it, so why do you need to look at it again? Because there's nothing... They are trying to see them. Where? Right, the solid purple, the solid pink line there. Right. Look to the left of it, there's a faint right. pink Hold line. On. All right, we're looking at cannabis. Piss off, yeah. All right. Although the suspect clearly disagrees with the drug swipe, there's no argument to be had with a blood test which came back positive for cannabis. The man pleaded guilty to drug driving and driving with no license or insurance. He was disqualified from driving for 12 months and ordered to pay 198 pounds in fines and costs. But it's a, a positive result from nothing really. You know, on another day, he evades police, he drives past us, he runs away from us. Um, but obviously the, uh, the stars have aligned today and we've been able to get hold of him. It's Halloween weekend, and the guys and ghouls of Middlesbrough are trick and treating themselves to a night on the town. <laughs> Halloween typically sees a spike in crime, and PC Jimmy Greaves is expecting a busy shift. I think whenever you, you drive through any town centre, on a, uh, a Friday or Saturday night, you've got to expect the worst. You've got to have eyes in the back of your head and um, expect the unexpected, really. Pub kicking out time, club kicking out time. You're just rolling into fight after fight. And something's kicking off nearby. There's a large fight around the corner where it looks like something's kicking off. Jimmy blue lights it to the incident. Other officers are on scene, and a man is laying himself down for the law. Get on your front. On your front. Lie on your front. Put your hands behind your back. This reveller is suspected of committing an assault further down the road. I've got nothing to do with it. Well, you've got to have something to do with it. I've got nothing to do with it. Check the cameras. Check the cameras. Check the cameras. You check the cameras. Okay. Right, a minute, mate, you're locked up for assault, OK? Yeah, so what? Don't have to answer. Remember the defence, we're not mentioning questions. Uh, we're not riding car. Yeah, bring, bring your legs up. Bring your legs up. Bring your legs up. Why are you locking me up for assault? Bring your knees up to your chest and we're going to sit you up, OK? Yeah, of course, strong, yeah. Right. Get on your feet. All right, I will. All right. Are you going to lock him up, then? It would appear that uh, this male that's just been arrested has been involved in the fight. The cameras have been watching it and um, he's been locked up for uh, assault. So he's on with the custody. It's just not non-stop tonight. From the minute we've rolled out the gates, it's been very what we would class as a chewy night. There's lots of people scrapping, fighting. Uh, it's just been one after the other. Looking forward to our days off after this. With one suspect detained, Jimmy heads over to the scene of another fight. It appear that there's uh, been quite a large fight and the aftermath still here. There's a lot of cops turned up now, so. They're just sending people on the way and making sure that it's not about to boil over again. Although the temperature outside is low, tempers seem to be rising. Fight across the road! Fight across the road! Give me your arm! No! I'm going to try, try, try! Stop the floor, take him down. Get his arm bended back then. Get his arm bended back then. So we've got a bit of crazy kick out time um, in Middlesbrough. Looks like uh, everyone's had far too much to drink. As a result, we've got one fight rolling into the next one. Um, the sirens going off all over the place as cops uh, getting up, running absolutely ragged. There'll be some sore heads in the morning, and one unfortunate young man has been left in a serious state on the pavement by an unidentified assailant. I've now got one male injured here with a head injury. Unfortunately, I still don't think the night's over yet. With an ambulance yet to arrive, it's up to officers on scene to try to stem the blood flow. 
We just need a very Can you just move back up the wheel a bit, please? Thank you. Luckily for the wounded man, Jimmy is a tactically trained medic. Right, keep, keep him there, mate. I'll go and get a little bandage. You've got to turn from being a cop and a medic at some point and uh, make sure we're dealing with uh, the medical issues. Um, the rest of that can be all sorted out later on, but the main thing is uh, we've got to keep people safe. There OK, all right, and rest back, back down. down. Nice and slow, nice and slow. Two seconds, two seconds. There we go. OK, just relax there, buddy. All right. like Terry Butcher in that famous photo in the England kit. Mint. <laughs> is my friend OK? Well, there's no-one else lay on the floor, so I'm, I'm assuming he's all right. The man didn't expect his Halloween night to end like this. Yeah, I think they might mash my brain a bit. Uh... At least you're looking a bit more lively. <laughs> Doing good Halloween, though. Perfect. But it could have been far worse. Try not to take your eye out, eh? I think what people need to remember is if you're going to go out and you're going to be punching people, it only takes one punch. We, we could easily be dealing with the death there. Um, and that's, you know, that just changes everyone's life in an instant. So going down the town and getting a little bit punch happy, yeah, I think they really seriously need to think about what they're doing. It's been a busy night for Jimmy, but it seems his efforts haven't gone unnoticed by the injured man's friends. You stand up. Imagine if it was us on glasses trying to start it out. I was thinking to myself, I'm going to have to, like, because obviously when you see people getting kicked in the face, it's not nice, you have it? to do something. But, yeah. like, I was thinking, well, like, I'm going to get... Like, imagine if I, like, stood up. No, it's not good. They're not going to light up like that. No, exactly. So it's what you so think what happened when they... He was turned off. Well, we just stopped. We were just there. He got completely knocked out and they kicked him in the head. It's it's being funny, though. But when you slow up and if they found out they killed someone, could they live? Well, that's there? the thing. When they're drunk, oh, they don't think about that, do they? I don't think what about that. I'm a bit drunk and I don't... Th you know, I think that. Why should they be any different? If the police weren't here on scene at the time, I'd hate to think what uh, actually could have uh, transpired from that. So he's going to be taken to hospital. The rest of them will go to custody for the night. I'm sure the cells are bouncing now, and just hopefully it's uh, it's going to calm down. <laughs> Neither of the men arrested were charged with assault. However, the first lad received a fixed penalty fine of £90 for public order. The second man arrested in the T-shirt was also given a caution for public order. And the man with a head injury made a full recovery. Coming up, the interceptors discover a new type of pizza topping. We believe it's uh, skunk cannabis. Try to stash it inside his pizza and uh, discard it. It's late night and PC Liam Sewell is on his way to Stockton to intercept a vehicle which is suspected of failing to stop earlier in the day. We've got that uh, white Land Rover on CCTV and Yarm Lane in Stockton that made off from uh, PC Moffat. It's parked up two lads in it chatting to a lass so district unit have been sent to have a look at it and um, we're attending as well. It's pro probably going to make off again. This pizza-loving cop is part of the dog section, and both he and his faithful hound, Louie, are hoping for a slice of the action tonight. I just want to get there as quick as I can, so um, if it does make off, we're in a position to respond. Liam arrives on scene at a pizza restaurant where the suspects have stopped to order a takeaway. And he gets the lowdown on the vehicle from fellow interceptor Justin Moffat via radio. Go on, mate. Now, Moff, we've got this, um, this Land Rover. We can't definitely confirm the reg, can we, for um, a seizure for fail to stop? What's the driver saying? Oh, he's uh, saying it wasn't him. He's saying he's all insured. Why would he make off? Yeah, that car, mate. Um, the one's lifting and he's got to explain why he made off. No lights on. But the suspects... So my name's Tigger T, being pulled with Bob by Quinn T. Driver Quinn T and passenger Tigger T deny any involvement. Yeah, yeah. I've well... I've not had no policeman behind me with like, <laughs> blue lights on saying yeah. stop your vehicle. You failed to stop in Carlton, mate, Carlton Village, so... I'll Carlton give you a quick Village, interview anyway. Yeah, no problem. In my pocket and open, we'll get it started. Well, like it. Um, because the car is suspected of failing to stop, Liam is going to conduct a drug search. 
No have you got anything on you that you shouldn't have, mate? No, mate. No. Nothing at all. As the search commences, Tigger T turns up with a pizza. And although Liam loves a slice, he's busy finding his own pizza evidence. Oh, a cannabis grinder. Yeah, it was just in the middle there, mate. And where there's drug paraphernalia... Trish one first. Cheers, my man. There's usually drugs. Any pockets at the back, mate. But where are they? Do we just check your bottoms, kid? Yeah. We've just been inside of them. Sorry? We've just been inside no, of them. No, I've been inside of these ones, oh, the yeah, outside yeah. ones. The man appears clean, so Liam has a nose in the car. Do you want that, mate? Yeah, man. Who's in the car, were you? Kids who've been smoking, obviously, they've been in the car. And that's it's been smoking, drugs. Smell cannabis, mate. Oh, they've been, they've been. And he sniffed out a familiar smell. Yeah. Yeah. They've been smoking, drawing it, but, you know, we haven't got him driving it, have we? No. To do a Section 5A on him, so... Well, we're just going to search the car for drugs. Yeah. Prior to searching the car with a dog, Liam removes temptation in the form of the gent's pizza takeaway. Is this yours, mate? Yeah, yeah. I'll pass you that a sec, mate, while we do the... stick the dog through. But Tigger T seems to suddenly be on a diet and dumps the takeaway. But this curious move has aroused the suspicion of an eagle-eyed cop. And lo and behold, there's a tasty discovery in the pizza box. And it's not the slices of kebab. We believe it's a uh, skunk cannabis. Try to stash it inside his pizza and uh, discard it. This extra herb topping will cost the lads a trip to the Nick. Michael, are we over yeah. the van with us, kid? Yeah, no problem. Come on. Just going to be searching you, mate. We're going to be taking you to the police station for full drug search, all right? Put your hands behind your back, mate. Locked up on suspicion of possession of controlled drugs, all right? All right, mate. So I locked up for the drugs, all right? Me? Yeah. Well, your mate's going to be locked up as well. You both will, but you're walking on with the pizza box, mate. All right. So it's yeah, 20 best two. Yeah, because I'm you're, listen, with the pizza box. you're locked up on suspicion of possession of intent yeah, to supply yeah, the controlled drugs. Talk to you, though. Yeah, of course you can, mate. I said we're both eating the pizza. So I know, mate. Do you me in? No, no, your mate's getting locked up as well, all right. Yeah, so, so you both will be locked up. Yeah. It's only suspicion, mate, yeah. We'll prove who the, uh, who the pizza and who the drugs belong to, eh? Although the lads clearly like to share a pizza, it seems they can't agree on who the cannabis belongs to. There's a pizza box there full of drugs. Is it? Is is drugs? <laughs> in his pizza, in the pizza box, yeah. That was in your car, and you've got the grinder, and you've got another empty pot. Go ahead. I've just got two lads. We've just got two lads locked up. We're going to point you back. As Pizzagate rages on, Liam has time to digest the evening's events. Obviously, the lad's got his um, his pizza there, uh, with his chips, his, you know, his kebab meat in there and his cannabis. So they've both been locked up on suspicion of possession with tent to supply. Um, good place to hide it, really, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I think I lifted it. I think I lifted that out of the car at one point, didn't I? Quinty, Tiggerty and the T-Mobile are on the way to Stockton, Nick, for a full search. It's been a good night for Liam, although his dog, Louis, will have to wait until later for a sniff of the action. So before Louis w w went in the vehicle, we moved the food out of it, which was the, um, the pizza box. And, uh, yeah, that, that Bobby looked in it. Obviously a bit sharper than I was, and he's found, uh, found all the cannabis. So a bit of a result, they're both in for peewits. And uh, they failed to stop. So, yeah, what started as that little job by Moffat, spotting a vehicle. Acting suspiciously has resulted in uh, two in custody and one vehicle off the road. A full search of the vehicle down the station revealed drug paraphernalia, but no further drugs. No further action was taken on the failure to stop, but with neither fessing up to the pizza stash, both were found guilty of possession of cannabis. The driver had to pay £85 in costs and a victim surcharge of £20. The passenger received an £80 fine and a £30 victim surcharge and £85 CPS costs. The cannabis was destroyed along with the pizza. In one of the busiest weeks of the year, a flood is the last thing staff need in New Paddington Station 24-7 next. And after that, lifting the lid on dealers and users of the nation's growing problem. New documentary series Cocaine, Can't Stop Using, is at 10.
police interceptors. Police! The pride of the northeast. Lock your protection water beetle. Yeah, it's been run. And scourge of the criminal class. We are high, man! Open the door now! Hand out! Hand out! We're up close and personal with Durham and Cleveland's crime fighting elite. In pursuit, off road, lethal list. And in the air. We've got a group of five runners, five runners, Nation Road now. With their crack firearms team. Oh, please! Oh! And formidable dog unit. Stand still, please, you dog! In the trenches. For the war on crime. Strap in. I am in pursuit. You're riding with the interceptors. They'll be filling the pants. Stay there! We'll be filling the cells. Coming up. Beagles fail to stop. Beagles fail to stop. A car chase ends with a handful of drugs and a hysterical passenger. Please, no. please, 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 An armed robbery in the dead of night. And organised chaos to stop a violent man. Stop trying to fight. Being an interceptor is not for the faint-hearted. Oh, please, put that down! What are you doing? Oh, 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 stay back! Stay back! Make no mistake, this is a dangerous gig. Well, you don't come to the door with that. So if the worst does happen and we're confronted by someone with a, a weapon, a knife or a firearm, Generally, they fall into a category that we call EMD, which is emotionally or mentally distressed, which means that their decision-making, their ability to function and just do normal things, like normal members of society, is affected by something, be that a mental illness or a, an alcohol problem or a drug problem or a heightened uh, mental state. And you throw that, in, or, or drugs, and you throw that into the mix and it just makes a dangerous situation, even more dangerous. It's the wee hours of Thursday. While night shifts are coming to an end for interceptors across the region, a news agent prepares for a new day. But this day will be like no other. A masked figure enters the shop and approaches the counter. With a knife against her throat, the newsagent struggles, but she's manhandled into the office and behind the counter. At knife point, the newsagent hands over cash and the masked thief flees, just as a member of the public approaches the counter. The man is an off-duty police sergeant and he's straight out after the armed robber. Two miles away, interceptor Liam Sewell gets the call. Grab the woman in the in the shop by the throat, forced to open the till and forced to open the safe and let the ball stop us. All in all, made up for about 250 quid. Liam knows the off-duty cop will be unarmed, but he's carrying a taser, pepper spray and 80 pounds of German shepherd muscle Titan. It's fair to say the cavalry's coming. Yeah, we're nearly there now, anyway. And they're not hanging around. The off-duty sergeant has cornered the armed robber in an alley. The suspect may have a knife, and the sergeant is unarmed. Put your hands up there. Put your hands up. Liam and Titan arrive on scene and make the arrest. Right, you're under arrest for robbery. Right. You do not have to see anything, but we have to answer the questions from the late nine o'clock. The suspect's face is uncovered. And it's a woman. 
Will you grab hold of her, mate? Yeah. She's secured the dog. But there's no sign of a knife. Liam has just been called to tackle an armed robber who has just held up a news agent at knife point. The suspect was cornered by an off-duty police sergeant. Put your hands up there. Put your hands up. And Liam arrived with police dog Titan to make the arrest. Hey, you're under arrest for robbery. The female suspect seems disturbed and denies carrying a weapon. You said he had a knife, but didn't have a knife. She could have thrown it. Looked out like one, but I didn't have one. Somewhere, somewhere between you getting on the wood. I think it's on this little stretch here, she's dropped it. Yeah. If there's a knife nearby, it's vital evidence. Yeah. It looks like she's dropped it as opposed to flipping. I haven't. Under the circumstances, any sudden moves from the suspect are cause for concern. Secure the dog. Otherwise, it's going to Get your hands behind your back. Will you get your hands off me? Hey. Hey, listen. Take your hands out of your coat. Otherwise, you're going to get bit. It's not in a court. With reinforcements arriving and the suspect in handcuffs, they can sweep the area for a knife. Will you take that off me? Yeah. She's dropped the knife somewhere. She's got a lot of money in her hand there. No knife, but a fistful of cash. That was a stick. Yeah. Where did you put the stick then? I threw the stick on the grass. Like how long ago though? Now she claims she was only carrying a stick. Over there. Where is one? Stick. Or over there. While the search for a weapon continues. Managed to find it again. The suspect is loaded into the van. But she's refusing to part with the cash in her hand. I did, I just dropped that money straight in the back of it. Yeah. No, it's mine. You know, I'll take the money off you. That's how we went with your money. Right. You're going to take the money. No, I don't want to count before you take it. It's just going straight in the bag. I want to count one before you take it. It literally just goes straight in the bag. No, I want to count one because last time it's your change, but no. She says the money is hers and she's worried about the police stealing some of it while she's in custody. Too many hands. You don't want to rip any of it. Well, can't we be going to put it in? There we it's go. It's all gone in the bag and it'll get sealed, all right? Watch your head. Finally, it's prized from her grip and she's safely locked away. Oh, don't wipe it in the But there's still no sign of a knife. Any chance she said it was a stick? As you chased her across the grass, she's thrown a stick, that's what she said. But she put a chuck in the back garden. He's adamant it was an eye. She was waving on like. I love CCTV. It's hard to tell from the CCTV footage whether it is a blade that the robber holds to the cashier's throat. But the have a go sergeant who gave chase believes he saw the suspect with a knife. She's dumped some clothing on the top of Clive. I don't know where Clive Street is, but the sergeant said she's been stripping off on the top of Clive Street, and he said she definitely had it in her hand. It's a needle in a haystack job in the dark, in pouring rain and over a wide area. He's followed her all the way up here. He's probably followed the best part of a mile while she's been waving a knife round at him, trying to keep him back. Um, we've come along, she's just surrendered. She's admitted the crime. Yeah, so what she said is um, she said it's a first robbery. Um, but um, I like to say, we saw that she's not very good at it. She's been caught, caught in a first attempt. But though she's coughed up to the robbery, she denies carrying a knife. No, she, yeah, she came along that one and up there. And he, he's saying the only place he, the only place he's lost sight of it with the knife or whatever was when she went when he went around that corner, right. which we might put it at that big stick. The search looks fruitless. I'm trying to get the CCTV now. So. But then there it is, Sarge. Got the knife. Yeah. And bingo. So yeah, this is the knife she's had. Yes, yeah, so we've got the knife here. We'll take this down and... Uh... Yeah, it's a good result, really. To get a good few, yeah, for this one. Yeah. Definitely. Caught red-handed robbery with the knife. And the cash. Money in your hand. Literally no better result. The woman with a fistful of cash was found guilty of armed robbery and was committed to hospital in order to protect herself and the public. For Liam, the whole thing's been a bit too close to home. I drive that route every after every night shift. I pass it about five in the morning, and uh, them hard-working people are out in that shop, you know, loading it up. Papers are getting delivered. 
And then you've got someone like that just going in thinking that you can uh, rob the place. All interceptors hope for an eventful shift. No change, no change, overtaking vehicles. Some pass at 100 miles an hour. I am in pursuit. Others are more pedestrian. I think I prefer night shifts when there's no traffic on the road and you can you can be more proactive and have a moot round, look for your, your naughty burglars and your thieves, whereas day shift you tend to be stuck in traffic like we are now. Bagging baddies is all about timing. Being a criminal is quite a good job really because they don't get out of bed on a morning, they sleep until lunchtime, it's an ideal job, but most of the world's got scruples and morals so they don't do that, they actually go out and work for a living. Day shifts are fine for traffic jams and paperwork, night time's where the action is. Uh, all right, I'm all right, I'm right. not bothered. Yeah. Come on, right. are, you, are you threatening? No, go on, go on. Are you threatening? Go on Give me your keys while I'll check it out. Check it out. An hour into his night shift, and a routing stop for Lee Wilson has already turned nasty. Who are you threatening? Saying you know where Mum lives. Who are you threatening? Right. You know, you know. Think... An aggressive driver has brought up Lee's family. All right, well you stop your threats now, lads. We're going to lock you up. All right, that's your first and last warning. Do you understand? Right. If anything happens to my parents' address, all right, you're going to be the prime suspect now. It's threatening to be one of those nights. I'm telling you what, my mother's tougher than me. We do not get paid enough um, to take any sort of um, violence, any sort of abuse um, when you're with your family off duty. Personal threats are always disturbing, but there's no time to dwell on that now. Lee spotted a speeding Mercedes. This white Mercedes thinks they're, uh, they're entitled to drive in excess of the speed limit for the area. Lee's dreamed of being a cop since he was eight, back when Bodie and Doyle were throwing their Ford Capri around in the professionals. LZLZ from Tangle 420, Quebec, over. Alongside Lee is rookie Rachel Thompson. She stays put while he heads out to discuss the driver's speed. Yeah, receive. He's away. Vehicles fail to stop. Vehicles fail to stop. Toe down, maximum warp. Vehicle fail to stop. Right, right, right. Homerton Road, advanced driver. T pack trained in an unmarked vehicle. Left, left, left. Childbury Road. The Merc is an E class sport. With a 0 60 of 7.5 seconds and a top end of nearly 150. Yeah, it's uh, right, right, right towards Morrison's. With its head start, the car's vanished. Stand by. But Lee's a pursuit specialist in a Skoda VRS. Skoda jokes are old news. This is also a 150 mile per hour car. As Lee races to catch up, he spots the Merc. It's gone through the estate. It's doubled back. It's temporary held, temporary held. It's a left, left, left. On to Ormsby Road. Speed, 6 0. Can have all 30 pack tactics. Now it's a race to catch the performance car. Yeah, it's still Ormsby Road towards a roundabout with um, Sandringham. Speed. 5-0. It's four up, two females in the back, a white male driver slowing for the roundabout. On the roundabout, speed 2-0. Looks like the driver's getting cold feet. Pulling into the way uh, into uh, a bus stop standby. We've been here before. Confirmed vehicle stopping. Yes, yes. But this time he's going nowhere. Get out. Get out. Get out. Now, get over. The driver's in cuffs, 
and one of his three passengers is in hysterics. Please, no, it's <laughs> Why didn't he stop? Because I needed to go to the hospital and my belly is in oh, absolute... He, he went and got hospital. Right, you're under arrest for dangerous driving. Failed to stop for police. All right, suspicion of theft of motor vehicle at this moment in time. Being really, really sorry. Rachel deals with the stressed out girl. I've just literally just got out of the hospital from whiplash. Reinforcements handle the other two passengers, one of whom is pregnant, and Lee takes the driver. It was the one that's just failed to stop. Yeah, no. Been driving dangerously. Right, I require you to provide me with a specimen of breath by me through an approved device. I can smell alcohol on you. Yeah, I've said a pint. Alright. He admits to a pint. Take a big deep breath and blow until I tell you to stop. Keep going, keep going, keep going, stop. While Lee waits for the breathalyzer, the stressed out girl protests the innocence of the male passenger. And reiterates her need for medical attention. As officers arrange transport to hospital, Lee has some good news. You've passed a roadside breath test, all right? And some bad news. I suspect that you're in the influence of drugs. All right, your pupils, your pupils, your, test me, test me your pupils are dilated. No, all right, they're now. huge. All right, now listen, to me. listen. All right. right, so you're under arrest on suspicion of uh, drug driving. Right, so all right, in section no, four of the Road Traffic Act. Right, you don't have to say anything. Next job is to give him a blood test to check for drugs. You're going to be taken down the neck, and you're going to be taken through a process. All right. The hysterical girl is going to hospital. No, no. How many times did we shout and scream at you? Meanwhile, interceptor Jimmy Greaves arrives with police dog Gunner to search the Merc. Gunner can sniff out cash, firearms and drugs. Gunner. I expect that there may be some drugs involved, so we're just going to put Gunner in and let him have a, have a sniff around, see if there's anything there. If there's anything, he will pick it up and indicate. Oh, just like this. Gunner's found something. Good boy. Ah. And earned a tennis ball. Good boy. So that uh, sort of freeze and... Indication is exactly what he's what he's doing there. Tells me that there's potentially something inside there. No, it's a bit of a centre console, so sometimes people can keep cash in there. We'll have a little look and see see what's inside. While Jimmy searches, Lee escorts the driver to the van. It's with that, with that. Hold on. Sorry about that, mate. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Jump. Go in there. Not as sorry as you're going to be. Just have a look in the car. Because Gunner has had a result. Dog's indicated on the uh, on the vehicle, and just in the centre console here is a, a bud of cannabis, probably a tenner's worth. So he's been arrested on suspicion of drug driving at this moment in time, and uh, that's probably a, you know what he's had tonight. He's saying he's had no drugs, but we'll take him down and we'll go through the process with him. It's a nice car with all mod cons. Yeah. Pint glass. I'll ask uh, who was it, who was this cannabis is. I'll ask one of them lads there. Uh, the passenger just produced a bag of white powder out of his pocket as well. Has he? Yeah. Unlucky. There you go, there's another lock up. The owner of the cannabis is currently unknown. But they have now found two bags of white powder on the male passenger. Luckily, it's a big van. So the other girl, she's, she's pregnant, isn't she? Given the situation, Lee thinks it's wise for the pregnant woman to follow her friend to hospital. And at least you've covered it, haven't you? In fair release, you say everything's all in order and baby's all right. You've done your bit, haven't you? All right, hope everything's OK. I won't tolerate people driving like that. And, you know, her parents, if they find out that she's been in this vehicle and he's driven like that, um, I'm sure they'll have a few things to say to him, and rightly so. Car chase, threats to family, coke, weed and a pregnancy, it's been one hell of a shift. Many. And it's not over yet. Yeah. 
sounds like there's a, a police officer's asking for some more units and they're coming from quite a distance away so it'd be wrong of me not to turn up and see if I can assist until they arrive. Two officers have called for assistance with a violent man and things have just escalated big time. We've got the, the police officers pressed as emergency button now. Every copper has an emergency button on their radio. When they hit it, all available officers drop what they're doing and race to assist. It's a last resort for desperate circumstances. Lee Wilson and rookie Rachel Thompson are knee deep in a crazy night shift. All right, well, you stop your threats now, lads, and we'll lock you up. All right, that's your first and last warning, do you understand? Lee's already faced thinly veiled threats. Did anything happen to my parents' address? All right, you're going to be the prime suspect now. And Nick's a runaway driver. Get out. Get off. Now, me. get over. Now they're responding to an emergency button pressed by coppers struggling with a violent man. 420, Quebec. Just give me an idea where I'm going. Lee isn't sparing the Skoda's 227 horses. Using all his driving skills, he races to the address. to find officers on scene and the violent man already hit with pepper spray. He's all right. I've got him. Yeah. yeah. Which I've lingers got... in the air. You all right? Yeah, just double lock in. Yeah, you get that out. You got a van, Guys, he's down, but not out. We've got him. We've got him. Come. Let's take over to him. Let's take him. Relax. All right, Lee. Shut up. He's been spitting at the cops. <laughs> spitting blood. It takes six officers to wrestle the violent man out of the house. <laughs> and he's not coming quietly. Finally, he's locked away, which is the safest thing for him and everyone else. Obviously, really violent, nasty individual, threatening to bite, threatening to spit at us. He was trying to spit, threatening he's going to bite our faces off. He's got leg straps on, he's got cuffs to the back, and he still managed to kick off in the back of the van. Can you imagine turning up to a house on your own with an individual like that? You know, it's nasty, nasty, and it's frightening. Mercifully, for the two officers who first attended, when the man got violent, the red button did its job. The noise that it makes is a clear indication to everybody who was listening to the radios when they hear that noise to know that there's an officer in trouble and everybody turns out. It's quite scary actually. Didn't really know what to see. It was like, I think it's like spitting blood. It's, it's quite, yeah, not, not very nice to see. But luckily he's in the van now, so. Tonight's been a baptism of fire for rookie Rachel. It's certainly an eye opener for you because that's something that in reality, it's something that you've got to be faced with. But you know, you could you could have any size police officer turn up to an incident like that. Um, you know, you, that'd be police officers like six foot two, and you know, gyms it every single day. It's um, it's it's frightening. It may have taken six coppers to restrain him, but it took one court to convict him. The violent man pleaded guilty to assaulting two police officers. He was ordered to pay £305 in fines and costs. As for the runaway Merc driver, he was charged with dangerous driving and also drug driving after a blood test discovered cocaine in his system. The male passenger was cautioned for possession of cocaine. No action was taken over the aggressive man in the Range Rover 
pulled over at the start of the evening. All in all, it was a monster night shift, and Lee's earned an early morning treat. I hate him. I really do hate donuts. It's early evening, and Spike's on duty in the unmarked car he calls Black Beauty. We've just had a report of two cars in Peterlee, which is uh, the, the main town nearest to where we are, um, performing donuts on the main road. Uh, someone's obviously heard this and they've got some cause for concern. Spike's an advanced driver. He can handle a fast car, but he's seen too many drivers lose it doing dumb tricks like donuts. We need to get there uh, and, and prevent any kind of crash from happening, or worse. The suspect vehicle's two silver cars were spotted five miles away. One of the added bonuses of us being in Black Beauty tonight, um, it's got all the same equipment of a normal traffic car, but once we get close to where a scene like this is happening, we'll just revert back to being covert. As he approaches the area where the silver cars were spotted, Spike kills the siren. I don't want people to actually hear us coming, but clearly I need to be able to move people out the way safely, so that's what we're doing at the minute. Finally, it's off with the blues and into full stealth mode. This is the road where it was uh, reported to be happening, um, so we're just having a look now and um, see if someone is still lurking by. Um, if they're not, it's then where could they have moved on to. There's no sign of silver cars doing donuts. But something else sets off Spike's spider sense. Two youngsters parked up. Go on, have a chat. Mate. Hi, mate, you all right? Yeah. What's up, mate? Just stop what you have for now. Well, absolutely. I don't know. That's all right, then. Hey, yeah, mate. Okay. Is this your motor? Um, no, it's my sister's, mate. All right. Are you allowed to drive us? Pardon? Are you allowed to drive us? Shut here, mate. Waiting for him. Just waiting for Apparently, him. the guy's sister is due any minute to legally drive them away, which raises a question. Who's just driven it here? My sister. Because the back wheels of the car are really warm. Oh, really? Yeah, it's only just been driven yeah. now. Ah, yeah. It's to the point where the actual discs are that hot. Their story holds water like an old sieve, and Spike's about to poke another hole in the absent sister defence. Let me just have a look at you, mate, because if there'd been somebody else in it, there's actually not room for you guys to be in the back. What do you mean? There's nowhere for you to have been sitting in the back. My oh, sister's right. gone down, mate, to get some tweet. I've just sold, sold a dog to some lads. Have you? Yeah, mate, I'll show you pictures. I'll show you, mate. The plot thickens. The back seat apparently contained a dog, which they've just sold. I sold a dog. Right. I'm not lying to you, mate. So there's been a dog in the back, has there? Yes. Look, I'm parked up, back of a white pickup. Are you, yeah. Are you fine? No problem, mate. See you soon. Right up, we'll wait for your sister to come back and to make sure with her name. This could be a long wait. Your sister's gone where? I've got something to eat. I've just been sold a dog. No, look, that's dog. I've just sold a dog. Is it? Yeah. As luck would have it, that may be the dog they've just sold. Come here, sir. Do the corny way. Hi, lad, you alright? Have you just bought this dog? Aye. Who off? Who else was with them? Just them. Just the two of them? Anyone else? No. Right on. Cheers, mate. The Shaggy Dog story rings true, but Rover's new owners saw no sign of the sister who supposedly drove the car here. The story checks out. They've just bought the dog off you. Um, the drama being they said there was only ever used to, were you? I don't. Yeah, because we've come and they come afterwards. Oh, All right. Time for another little poke at the sister defence. Can you ring your sister then? She ain't got a phone on her. I thought you wanted to ring her earlier. I said I'm waiting for her. Right. The situation is simple. 
produce a sister or the car's getting seized. Just the, the drama is there's only your sister and she would to drive this. Yep. You know, that's, that's where my interest is right now, to kind of get yeah. to the bottom of it. Yeah. Um, if, if you've driven up here without insurance, it's not the end of the world, but I'll wait here until your sister arrives. OK, mate, you'll have to look the way here, then. Equally, I can have the NPR cameras looked at that'll cover the journey from you in this car from wherever you have come at. Yeah. The ones where you are right now are incredible. High definition. Um, if that's when you're going to show your sister driving, then happy days, you've got nothing to worry yeah, about. Yeah. Not, but, not, but now's the time to tell me if it was something different to that. What mate, my sister was driving. I'm like, oh, we've done it sat in the car waiting for it. It's not no crime, is it? No. Well, yeah. no. We'll just wait then to make sure. Okay. Hello? I'm sat here doing that, and they're coming to kill for me saying we're going to wait for her to come back. Are you, have you got rights to take care of me? You've got cars not over. Yeah, to prevent you from driving us. Yeah, but I'm not driving, I'm going to go for some toy and bring my sister. It's a standoff in Peter Lee. Right now, there's a, there's a suspicion that you two have taken this without your sister's consent. That's what my suspicion is. The guy is sticking to his story. She had, we could borrow it to protect the fetch the dog. Unfortunately, his mate isn't. Right, is that the crack? That's the, that, that's the crack. What's the crack with that then? Game over. Right, I've drove it through. You got any insurance? No. Believe it or not, this isn't day one for me being a Bobby, you know. Been doing this for a long time. I knew that ten minutes ago. His friend wasn't quite as tuned into the story as what he was, you know. And But I was just playing along with the story and I was going to wait for the sister to turn up. Would have been a long wait, wouldn't it? You know, she wasn't just round the corner getting a bag of chips. <laughs> The dog-selling driver attended court, but the case was discontinued as the courts decided there wasn't sufficient evidence. When it comes to facing villains or rowdy crowds, the interceptors have a secret weapon. It's loaded with teeth and not to be messed with. It's nine at night. Mo Rashad is on duty in Middlesbrough with police dog Max. Control from 485. The first record Mo bought was Smooth Criminal. None of those out tonight. Mo's hunting a cut price burglar who's robbed a shed. That's it. I want to see what the crap is. But he's just been flagged down by a worried local. Uh, the kids, uh, the, uh, the burning, uh, the, I don't know what is inside. It's lots of kids which, which, inside the plane. Which, which park? Sorry? What, what, who, what's happening? Or oh, fire in the park? Yeah, the fire, the kids at the play and burn the fire. The man leads Mo into the park. Is it a building? Is it a building? No, not building. The interceptor breaks into a run. And this is why. Guy Fawkes night was nine weeks ago. But someone started not one. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. But now. two fires. Stay where you are. I'm telling you now. Here. Here. Mose grabbed a lad who he saw playing with a flaming wheelie bin. Yeah. What, were you, what were you doing with that then? He was trying to put it out. He was trying to put it out on us. Some kids came over earlier on. And then obviously he was trying to put it out. I've just came there. No mums. Not me. The lads deny setting the fire and they're becoming rowdy. Yeah, I'm buzzing, I'm buzzing. Mo cuts them some slack. Right, don't. Did you just say, did you say pig there? But they're really playing with fire now. You know what, we make it easy. I won't, the, I won't get the dog out for you. Give us two minutes. Don't you get the dog? The prospect of a snarling dog does the trick. But in the time it takes to melt a wheelie bin, they're back. Keep it real. Keep it real. Keep it real. When Mo returns, <laughs> North East 17 won't stay another minute. A few blasts with the extinguisher, and it's back on the road. 
one man and his dog are worth 10 coppers. And in the early hours, Mo and Max have another chance to prove that. We're going to somebody brought in Britain into a phone box, which is uh, not too far away from here, actually. Highfield Hotel, um, directly outside there. Mo gets his size nine down. A white male wearing a red tracksuit top. And arrives to spot a man on his knees in the phone box. Place with the dog! Stay there! Stay there! Stay there! Reports are that he has tools, so Moe's taking no chances. On the floor. Do not move. Do not move. Jimmy, what have you got in there? Get on the floor now! I'm on the phone. Put your, hand, put your hands on the floor. Put your hands on the floor now! I can see something in there. I'm telling you, get your hands on the floor. Do not move. On the phone, dickhead. Stay there. What do you think I am? Idiot. Apparently, he was making a phone call on his knees. Jesus Christ, I've just gone in. A phone Girlfriend? 45. There are tools in the phone box, and Moe's worried the guy may have something he could use as a weapon. Right. Yes, please. Right. Put your hands on the floor. I'm telling you now. I don't want you to take nothing else out of your pockets. I can see tools in there. The guy's waving his mobile around, which raises the question of why he needed a phone box. Will you come for me? Uh, there's tools in there. Reinforcements have arrived. Put your hands on your back, mate. Put your hands on your head. 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 All right, I'm not. I'm not you, guys. You know that. Good lad. Right, I'm going to give you two seconds, right? I'm not an idiot, right? Right, I'm not an idiot, right? Just do what I said. Just do what I said. No, shut up, right? I'm not an idiot, right? I'm not new to this, right? I'm not an idiot, right? Right. You've got tools in there. Throw them all. Phone me. Get me daft. Who hasn't called a loved one for help? Who hasn't called a loved one on their knees from a phone box? Who hasn't called a loved one on their knees from a phone box? Who hasn't called a loved one on their knees from a phone box? Who hasn't called a loved one on their knees from a phone box? Who hasn't called a loved one on their knees from a phone box? Who hasn't called a loved one on their knees from a phone box? Who hasn't called a loved one on their knees from a phone box? Who hasn't called a loved one on their knees from a phone box? Who hasn't called a loved one on their knees from a phone box? Who hasn't called a loved one on their knees from a phone box? Who hasn't called a loved one on their knees from a phone box? Who hasn't called a loved one on their knees from a phone box? Good lad, get up, get in. And the late night caller can ring his girlfriend from Borough Nick. After all, it's good to talk. There's tool marks and imprints where the uh, money box would be on this, uh, for the telephone box. Uh, there's uh, blades on the floor, there's a, there's a pliers um, and a screwdriver. Moe's late night caller was charged with attempted theft and being racist towards a police officer. In the meantime, after a cold night on his knees, the suspect could probably do with a hot drink. He's obviously bought with him his uh, hot cup of tea because obviously it's a cold night, just to uh, get him by through while he <laughs> assist him whilst he's uh, trying to get in. So you all need a hot drink, but um, it's probably going to get cold now by the time he's out of uh, custody. Still to come. Whose one is it? Mum's. Chris sends a message to Mum. Well, you can tell her you drove like a prat. It's Thursday evening, and a van driver is giving a masterclass in erratic driving. Unfortunately, he's doing it right in front of Chris Green. Come out of a junction on the side road and put his foot down, probably to about 15 or 30. And he's just undercut about four cars down there. He was in the wrong lane twice in the roundabout. Man mounting Chris has been on the force for 17 years. The dog handler is no traffic cop, but when in Rome... So we just need to have a bit of a chat with him, see what the crack is with him. In his disabled van. What's the crack, mate? Sorry, mate. Ah? Sorry. What's the rush? There's no rush. Well, why have you done that, then? Well, just you've obviously pulled out the right. side road there and floored it, up to Lidl. And the second you've got a chance that uh, two, no, two way, you've undercut four, you've undercut four cars. I was doing 40 miles an hour there. Yeah, but you've undercut four cars onto the roundabout in the wrong lane and then cut back ahead of them. I was doing 40 there, mate. I don't care what your speed were, mate. It was a manner of driving. It was, it was no accident, though, was it? Huh? It was no accident. Luckily there wasn't, though. No. There, there, there wouldn't What's irrelevant, mate? Van Man's not exactly a model of repentance. I, I came round on this lane, which was coming up here. After undercutting four cars, I you're missing under, the point. I didn't undercut four cars. Mate, there's a camera in the front there. 
You were in the inside lane. Down from the no, roundabout. No, that's the overtaking lane. If you, overtaking if, lane? Yeah, yeah, if you, if you, come, if you think about it, the right hand lane is the overtaking lane. That's, you're right, it is, yeah. You're yours on the left. So, no, you said is there a highway code in the house? Mm. Whose van is it? My mum's. The keys in the vehicle? No. What do you want them for? Just to secure them for the time being. Right. I'm not going nowhere. I've pulled over here. Sit in the car for a spot. That side. I'm, I'm okay to leave, thank you. <coughs> I, I feel claustrophobic when I'm in the vehicle. We'll stand on the roadside then. On the uh, path. Van man says he gets claustrophobic in vehicles. Maybe that explains his driving. Admin from Tango 44. I wasn't undertaken. How was I undertaken? Please, please could you explain? Yes, please. Sorry? Please, could you explain? How I've explained I was once. Twice, actually. You can take I'll tell you what, lanes, I'll can't. explain to you now, because you've, you've had one Section 59 warning for that in February this year, which runs in February next year, right? Police issue Section 59 warnings for antisocial driving. Two in one year, and they'll seize your car. I intend to give you a second one for that and I'll explain to you why. Deep breath, third time lucky. You've gone from the lane two into lane one, undercut about four cars, cut back inside before the roundabout, you've been in the right hand lane, you've cut back across in front of some other car onto this roundabout. That's other than that, your driving was perfect. I know you're insured on that, but it ain't going to stop me seizing the car because it's the second time in a year. Mum's disability car. Well, yeah, I know. Oh, no, on, this, on, on the flip side, is that my fault or is it your fault? Give him a clue. You own your mum's car and you've driven like that. That ain't my fault, is it? Mm. Van Man seems to have accepted his fate. OK, I'm walking from here. But he then changes his tune and threatens to grass Chris up. Oh, um, mum, you stole the car. Well, you can tell you drove like a prat. Stole the car, mate. Yeah. He deserves to lose the car. It was only seven or eight months ago you got the same kind of ticket for it. So here we are in October and the car's gone. But the driver hasn't. So really, you're stealing the car, aren't you? You're no. A, you're a pinch in the car, you're there. No, I'm using the police reform act to seize it. You're, you're stealing the car, in my eyes. That's fine. That's theft, I'm a young There's many other you're eyes than yours, mate. You're an officer. I am. Are you under your oath today? Yeah. Oath of office, so yeah. you're now collecting revenue. You said, yeah, there, so this man's committing fraud. Fraud? Fraud, I yeah. Was you, you, you told me you're under your oath, so you're now collecting revenue, so you're taking my mum's car for revenue. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. And you're under the world, yeah, mate. Yeah, you're under the world. The driver's adamant he's witnessing a crime. So naturally, he decides to call the police. I'm getting on the phone. Okay, don't, mate. You enjoy. Please, can I help? Hello, there. Um, one of your officers just took my car off me. So he's like, pinching my car, he's stealing my car from me, it's a disability car. Why? What, what do you mean, disability car? Right, one of your officers is stealing my car, he said I was driving erratically, right? I came down the arm road. Um, While Van Man brings the control room up to speed, Chris waits calmly for the recovery truck. He's persistent, and he thinks he's going to get the key back, which he's not. Listen. I'm not getting into an argument. I take 999 calls as well and taking non-emergency calls and there's currently one 999 call queuing. So walk up right. to the officer and go and speak to him, OK? I'm d done with talking to him, you know what I mean? He's, he's been explained to what's happening about three or four times. Refused to sign the paperwork. I've left that in the car for his mother, so she's aware of what it is, the details of the offence. So as far as I'm concerned, case closed. I'm not going to bother speaking to him anymore. It's a bit of a waste of time. Just give him... Uh... There we are, his recovery anyway. It's up to you what you say to him, but I can't, I can't stand the phone to you. I'm putting the phone down now. Well, okay. It's a valiant effort. I think he's finally given up, though. But it's now time to call a taxi. The only person I feel sorry for is mother, who unfortunately needs a vehicle and won't have it in the morning. But again, that's his problem and not mine. The police intercept is about new next Monday at 8. Tomorrow at 9, our other forces in action here on Channel 5. Don't miss the all-new Traffic Cops Drugs Bus Special. Back to tonight, and we remember the royal celebrations last week. It was a busy day at Paddington Station. The Windsor Wedding Special, brand new next. Police interceptors. Please. The pride of the northeast. Lock your protection water vehicle. 
and scourge of the criminal class. We are high, man! Open the door now! Hand out! Hand out! Come here! Hand out! We're up close and personal with Durham and Cleveland's crime fighting elite. In pursuit, off road, lethal list. The big ass is And in the air. We've got a group of five runners, five runners, Nation Road now. With their crack firearms team. Oh, please! Oh! And formidable oh, dog oh, unit. Stand still, please, you dog! In the trenches. In the for the war on crime. Strap in. I am in pursuit. You're riding with the interceptors. We'll be filling the pumps. Stay there! We'll be filling the shells. Coming up. Police for the dog! Sparks flies, two burglars are caught in the act. Get on your knees now! Get on your knees, both of you! A van tries a reverse ram. Victor is now behind us, reversing. Contact. And a wrong un on the run. Hold police! Stop where you are! It's the early hours of the morning and interceptors Richie Gatland and Andrew A.J. Terry are out on patrol in the marked X5. The roads are pretty quiet, but the automatic number plate recognition cameras have picked up a suspect van a few miles away. We've had an activation for a, a no insurance, which we have an idea where it might be heading. And now it's just a case of trying to figure out which way they're going to go so we can intercept them. Family man Richie's favourite subject at school was geography, and tonight he and AJ are putting their navigation skills to work to hunt down the van, and they're soon behind it. There we go. That's the one. It just pulled out of there. It did, didn't it? The police database tells them the van doesn't have insurance, so Richie and AJ are going to give it a pull. It's just popped out of one of the kind of neighbouring estates, which is a little bit suspicious for this time of night as to why they've been there. But when Richie sticks on the blues, the driver decides he doesn't want to stick around. LA from Tango 310 Foxtrot. Urgent vehicle failing to stop. AMPR mark of quiet vehicle stop. Can have authority for initial pursuit, please. Trained, authorised. Suitable vehicle and currently low risk speed of 5 0 heading out of Darlington. In a straight up race, the van would be no match for the Interceptor's high spec X5. But as the pursuit's heading onto narrow country roads, they have no choice but to follow and wait for other units to join them. 4 5, that's been pushing. 3 1 3 We've got air, air support, I know they were in the Darlow area. Yes, yes, we got it. Speed six zero miles an hour, still low risk. Potentially going towards the motorway. The vehicle is registered outside of the area. The speed is six five miles an hour, still low risk. If the van does go on the motorway, the interceptors will have more room to manoeuvre. Right now, Richie and AJ are more worried about what the driver's doing. Vehicle wrong side of the road, medium back to low risk. Wrong side of the carriageway for the right-hand bend. The pursuit's headed into a village, where the roads are thankfully empty, but the van carries on breaking the speed limit. Continuing through the 30s at 5-0, no other traffic on the road, no pedestrians. Get a stinger ahead of Shildon. Potentially heading towards Shildon area if we've got anyone with a stinger. Vehicle is committed right, right, right. South A6072. A6072 towards Darlington. The runaway van's now heading back in the direction it came from. Now he's on the main road, the driver puts his foot down on the opposite side of the road. Thankfully, it's free of oncoming traffic. Vehicle is wrong side of the roundabout, committed A68. Richie takes the legal way round and keeps his prey in sight. They thought they were going to get away with that one. The van's now hammering it at more than 80 and continuing to make increasingly reckless moves. Vehicle was temporarily wrong side of the road, back to the right side of the road. Speed 90 miles an hour. Staying on his side of the road, speed is 100 miles an hour. 
with the driver smashing the speed limit and taking even more risks, they need to end this pursuit before someone gets hurt. Can we have authority for tea pack, please? Yes, sir. Authority. Other units are closing in. Once they arrive, they'll try to box the van in, but then it turns off the main road. Vehicle's turning left, 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 A6279 towards Darlington. The van driver's done everything he can to try and shift advance driver Richie and failed. So now he tries a different tactic. Vehicle's braking, braking, stand by. Attempt to reverse ram. The van's trying to disable the cop car, but Richie's too quick for him, squeezing to the side to avoid getting smashed. Vehicle is now behind us, reversing. The van's now trying to spin round and get away. Contact. But Richie's blocked him. Get out the car! Get out the van! Decom, decom. No, no, the no, passengers no. run off into a field with AJ hot on his heels. I'm police! Stop where you are! Interceptors Richie Gatland and AJ have been in a high-speed pursuit with a van. Speed 90 miles an hour, staying on his side of the road. Speed is 100 miles an hour. Still After failing to lose the pursuing police car, the van driver tried a different tactic. Vehicle's braking, braking, stand by. Attempt to reverse ram. But Richie managed to dodge him before reversing himself. Vehicle is now behind us, reversing. And blocking in the van. Contact. After taking out the van's windows... Get out the car! Get out the van! Decom, decom. No, no, One running no. over the fields. Richie dealt with the driver and AJ legged it into a field in pursuit of the passenger. On police! Stop where you are! On police! Get on the floor now! On police! Get on the floor! Get on the floor now! On the safe now! On the floor! Stay there! Do not move or you'll be tasered. Less than 50 yards into the field, the runner has given up. Put your arms and small your back. AJ's got his man. Both arms. Hello. Stay down on the floor. Hello. Put your arm out in front of you. That's all received. What I want you to do yeah. is scoot your knees up underneath you and stand up. Now listen, don't do out daft. I'm not going to run, I'm not All right, <laughs> well... Stranger things have happened, all right? Are you injured? No, all right. Then. Just tired from running? Yeah. Me too. <laughs> You're dafty. <laughs> you lost your shoe? Somewhere. He's not the healthiest of lads. He's run across a muddy field. What can I say? He lost his shoe. He's never going to run fast, is he? <laughs> a van's come for the two suspects, and Richie's first in with the driver. That's the reason, mate. I got a license. Is that all? Yeah. The driver of the vehicle. Kind of, I think he was more in shock than anything else. We've come round and shattered the window, and then basically dragged him out of the vehicle quite quickly. The passenger has decided to make off on foot, so he's not innocent if he's running off like that. Colleagues have checked the vehicle over, and there might be some items from a burglary, so they've been locked up on suspicion of burglary, failed to stop for police, dangerous driving, um, and he's admitted he hasn't got a license, but I doubt that's the real reason for him not stopping. The two arrested men will have to answer some questions about the contents of the van but they're not the only ones under investigation. As with all cases involving a police car in a collision, a senior officer, in this case Pete Tate, has come to check everything's been done by the book. My role is just to investigate the collision itself. To make sure the officers have, have carried out the procedure correctly, that it's been safe and what they've carried out uh, authorised and within training. So, I mean, one of the first things I'll do, obviously, look around the scene, get the vehicle details. I'll speak to the driver, which in the case was PC Gatlin. Probably 10 metres in front of where that tree is, it just hit the brakes and stopped dead in the middle of the road. AJ said... Attempt to reverse ram. At which point, yeah. done our technique and gone down the outside of him. As soon as we've gone down the outside, looked at him, he's just whacked it in reverse and he's tried to basically J-turn the vehicle round. Yeah. I've had no option other than just to basically wedge him immediately because I didn't want him to go any further. Contact! You've got, as you've got him out, you've shut the window. I've shut the window for the shock factor yeah, yeah. and then dragged him out. Get out the car! Get out the van! While Pete gets the van driver's version of events, Richie has a look at the damage he caused. I knew he was going to wedge himself, so I had to make more of a wedge. That, to be fair, is probably the best place if we're going to take any damage. It's on the rear bumper, it's not near the axle or the chassis or anything else like that. 
That's part and parcel of our job, really, unfortunately. And collision investigator Pete's happy that everything's legit. So he's very determined to get away, so it became quite dangerous. So ultimately, nobody's injured. Both offenders have been arrested. There might be stolen property in the back as well, so I'm delighted with the result, really. The only person who won't be delighted is the police mechanic. And now for a question. How many interceptors does it take to fix a bumper? It's barely on the wheel, that. That's better than I thought. That's all right. That's push oh. The answer is five. One to give it a kick. Aye. Right. Hey, just get the big car out like AJ. One to use a pry bar. AJ, just don't burst the tyre. That's drivable. There you go. And three to stand around making helpful suggestions. See? Minimal damage. Seven workshop. And now the dust has settled, AJ has a moment to reflect on the man he chased. Oh, police! Stop where you are! And then nicked. Don't do out daft. I'm not going to run, I'm not All right. Well, he seemed like a decent bloke. He's probably just... Shut, Shut up, he's man, AJ! He's got a hard time, he's one hard time, whatever. He seemed like a decent bloke. <laughs> You just you get chatting to these million. thing is right you get chatting to these people and you realise how much you got in common with, like this thirty year old lad you who's on? got two kids. He did the wrong thing, didn't he? He was a naughty boy. <laughs> the driver was later convicted of dangerous driving and driving with no license or insurance. He was banned from driving for two years and received eight months behind bars. The passenger was arrested for unlawful taking of a motor vehicle and the investigation continues. No further action was taken in relation to the items in the back of the van. Boom, brother. Yes, mate, that was Alice. Do you like that? Good driving. That's what I mean. It's raining cats and dogs, and interceptor Liam Sewell is hoping for a peaceful night on patrol. It's nearly midnight now, the weather's coming really bad. It's like driving through a river, to be honest with you, so I'm kind of hoping we don't get any jobs where I have to get help the cat. Dog handler Liam loves pizza, pursuits, and the mighty Middlesbrough FC, but he doesn't like the rain. Nightmare weather for working that dog, to be honest with you, because all the scent will be washed straight away. You know, even chasing cars in this, it's hard enough to just keep the car on the road as it is now without a vehicle making off. I've got all the weather gear, but I'm a fair weather cop, to be honest, so I'm hoping I don't have to get out the car in this, get my air wet. Thankfully for Liam and his luscious locks, the storm soon passes, but the wet roads are causing chaos for motorists. As he approaches the end of his shift, a call comes through about a nasty smash. Two vehicle out they see involved in a car and a motorbike. Information is that the car's on its roof. The rider of the motorbikes ran off into the estate, so we're going there to um, basically assist and try and locate the, the motorbike rider. If there's the car on its roof, there's going to be some serious injuries, I would have thought. If it's hit a motorbike, I can't believe he's ran away. People run for all sorts, might be a disqualified driver, could be a nick motorbike. Loads of reasons, but hopefully I'll get the opportunity to ask him when I catch him. As he gets closer to the crash site, Liam receives an update. Liam goes straight towards Curling Hill Drive. Yeah, male and female, but the only description is the female's wearing white trousers. The lads will stop you that teenage. So now he's looking for two people that have run from the car, not the motorbike rider as first thought. Yeah, it sounds like it's the occupants of the car that have run off. A male and female, females described as wearing white trousers. The male's stocky teenager, apparently. Meanwhile, officers dealing with the motorcyclist have received some alarming information. LZ from 407, Mr. Hipson's of the opinion that this is a deliberate act rather than a collision. We've got to get these cars. The motorbike driver's saying that this car's deliberately rammed him up the backside. You know, and if it has done that, it's quite serious, isn't it? You know, you're going to cause someone some massive injuries coming off a motorbike. Lucky enough, today he's just walking wounded. Area search now, see if we can find this lad and lass who's walking about. They're going to be skimping in and out this estate somewhere. It's like a rabbit warren, though. Another unit is also on the lookout, and they've picked up the male driver. As Liam turns a corner, he catches sight of a girl wearing white trousers. I thought now, not see her now. Hey, Van, can I see Fulton where to that the Hey, love. Stop where you are. You're welcome, thank you. How you doing? 
Out on your left to see that car. Out on your around from the car. The car around there. How around are you, Dan? Why do we have no car? 49, I've got the uh, female detained as well. Car? Yeah, look, you're covered in mud. Right, so you to start talking to us, otherwise you're going to get locked up. We've got the female detained, we've got the driver detained. So we're going to bring them both in on suspicion of assault. You know, they've used a vehicle and caused someone some injuries. It's a serious, serious job. They could have killed the lad. He's on a moped and he's being rammed off. She stinks of booze. I bet the driver's over the limit as well. They'll both come in and we'll sort out what's going on in the morning. The girl is taken off to Middlesbrough Nick and Liam goes to the scene of the crash to find out what's happened. The vehicle that's on its roof has been sat behind the moped. He's come down here on his moped. He's been hit just to the, the side of where I'm standing now. You can see the start of the debris on the road. Come off his bike. His helmet's landed just there. He's slid onto the grass verge. Car's hit the lamppost, flipped over. Then these mopeds continued all the way down the bottom. And uh, the first thing he said to the bobbies is that they've done it on purpose. Some high speed and the guys look at you be alive. He should be dead. He should definitely be dead getting hit. Rear ended like that. Liam's next stop is custody to book the girl in, while her suspected partner in crime has to sit and wait his turn. Both seem to be denied being in the vehicle, so, you know, maybe it wasn't them and there's other people that match their descriptions at five o'clock in the morning, covered in mud, running around Thornby. This lady's nearly finished getting booked in. We've got the driver of the vehicles just waiting to come through in the uh, the next one. We won't book them in at the same time because they're linked to Dunham shouting uh, excuses, reasons across the Cussy Centre. So he'll be up next. The girls quickly and quietly off to the cells. Next up is the driver, and he's nowhere near as compliant. Hey, listen, get off me. Listen, will you get off me, you stupid little... Excuse me. You understand why you've been arrested? Listen, yeah. listen I'm not right, no. Listen, don't. Try and hurt me. No, try and hurt me. No, listen, there's no baby like that. If he's one of the... The, the thing got all strong me like that. Made me look like a rapist. The reason why they're surrounding you is because you're volatile and aggressive. Well, what would you do if you'd been wrongly accused? You stupid little... Remind me, just remind me, man. She's in the cell, we're going to go and muck your mouth in. Probably going to have to give these hand because he's going to end up kicking off, I think. Um, I'll use some of my charm. But unfortunately, the suspect goes from potty mouthed to actually needing a potty. Oh, he's on the plea. Just a dirty, filthy beast, isn't he? He's just playing up, being an absolute pain. I'm glad I got the girl, because if that was me, I'd have been devastated. <laughs> It'd be all over your boots and your legs. Dirty, dirty animal. My name is... I'm a scumbag. <laughs> and race died in the car crash, and I just took the car there to the lower. Yo! Uh, you? I've been back out smashing it in 2021. Blue 99 on the roadside, a bit of cannabis out there as well, out of his pocket. He's got some pills. Have you been in a car accident tonight, yes or no? The nurse is trying to assess him to see if he needs hospital treatment, but he's not engaging. So he's going to get sent to hospital anyway, just as a precaution. And we'll have to do the blood procedures up there. Unfortunately, he's going to be in amongst the general public up there, probably shouting and bawling. Now, I know we've got to look after his welfare, but he's tried to kill someone tonight, him driving that car. And now he's gone up here and he, wasting more taxpayers' money. He's nearly got the alphabet and drugs come out of his pockets and it's attempted GBH and dangerous driving. So, you know, he's got a, he's got a big long list of uh, charges there. He's likely to be remanded. And as he said there, I'll see you in 2021. Well, hopefully. The driver was charged with Section 18 assault driving whilst disqualified and under the influence of alcohol, dangerous driving and having no insurance. The female passenger was arrested for being concerned in the assault. They were both released on bail whilst the investigation is ongoing. Oh, police, stay where you are now! You will not get tears yet! The interceptors love nicking villains. It's why they get up and go to work. Got one detained, got the driver and getting drunk drivers off the road and banned is many interceptors' favourite part of the job. The people that go out and, and have a skinful and then get behind the wheel of a car, I think it's the ultimate neglect of duty of, of being a licence holder. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. You're not only putting your own life at risk, but you're putting other people's lives at risk, and we see it first hand. We see the fallout from drink drivers killing themselves or killing other people and we have to deal with the families we're the ones that pick up the pieces so 
for me personally, it, it's always going to be target and drink drivers because it's it's absolutely deplorable. It's Saturday night, and interceptor Chris Lambert is out on patrol when a call comes in. First one of a male has driven into a house, smashed the front door. Male's driven into the front of a house, so whether it's deliberate criminal damage or somebody that's had an RTC, we're not sure at the minute. Apparently, the caller is still on scene, possible section 5. Alright, we're just getting updated that he's probably going to be a drink driver. The roads are really slippy tonight, it's been snowing for the last couple of days. Parts of the road are covered in black ice, so that combined with the drink driving um, element, it's never going to end well. Chris arrives just as the driver is being locked up. Are you the, uh, is that your car? Yeah. That's your car. Yeah. 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 Is anyone injured? No, luckily we've just sit the front of there. The driver swerved off the road and smashed into the front of this house and there's a lot of damage, but thankfully only to the building and the car, and there's no doubt how it's happened. The guy's blew 118 at the roadside. Apparently he's just been travelling up here at speed, swerved to miss a taxi, end up in this poor family's hallway. He's been locked up for drink driving. Idiots don't take into consideration anyone else but themselves when they're jumping in the car and driving about. There were two people inside the house when the car hit, They've had a very close call. My mum's just seen the headlights coming in towards the front of the house. She's jumped up out the chair for what's this? And the car's just gone straight in the front door, took the door off its hinges. It's cracked the inside of the house. The glass is all smashed it's all the way up the hallway. There's part of his phone that slid underneath the door because he's coming with that much force. My mum's dead shook up because obviously just not even a couple of feet to the left and it wasn't the dark was there, do you know what I mean? In custody, the driver blew more than three times over the limit. He later pleaded guilty to drink driving and was ordered to pay £761 in fines and costs and was banned from driving for 28 months. Though given what he did, he's lucky to have avoided committing an even more serious crime. Thankfully, you know, no one's been hurt, but there's people all over in the street around here, and we could have been uh, we could have been dealing with a fatality or, you know, multiple fatalities here. Coming up, past us now. Jacko T packs a suspected drug dealer. If we get it right, they'll be filling the pants, and we'll be filling the cells. Move out, move out, move out. Liam hunts for a man armed with CS gas. You under arrest, all right? What for? Been impression of a firearm. And Justin stops some angle grinding burglars. Stay there! Do not move! Ah. I'll deploy this dog! Ah. Ah. Hello from 313 Fox Rod Urgent. The interceptors have many different ways of stopping dodgy motors. Stinger is like the successful Stinger. He's doing 90 mile an hour. We need to be like 120 plus to try and catch this vehicle. And one of the most effective is the tactical pursuit and containment, or TPAC. Where three police cars box in a vehicle and force it to come to a stop. The TPAC, that's a really good tool. If you've got somebody that's travelling along a dual carriageway, and you want to get that vehicle stopped, we'll use the element of surprise. We'll just get them boxed straight away before they realise what's happening to them. It's bringing a resolution to the incident without anybody getting injured or anything getting damaged. It's a really effective tool, preemptive TPAC manoeuvre. It's Saturday night, and interceptor Paul Jacko Jackson has just started his shift. He's single crewed in the unmarked Beamer. We've only been in the door five minutes, and we've been past the job that's actually ongoing as we speak. We've got some information about a male that's travelled from the concert area down to Liverpool to collect a large quantity of drugs. And the intelligence is 
that he's hired a van for it because the amount he's meant to be collecting is too big to fit in his car. We're fairly confident that there's at least one pinch point he must go through, so all of our cars are heading up there now with a view to doing a preemptive stop on the vehicle. Jacko's nicked hundreds of villains and won numerous awards and commendations in his two decades on the force. He's in his element tonight. These are the sorts of jobs you relish being involved in. We train hard for them so that when it happens in reality, we're bang on it. And what we're aiming for is an element of shock and awe. They won't know what's hit them till it's too late. The hired van is believed to be driving on an A road, and Jacko knows the perfect place to lie in wait and what to do when it turns up. Yes, sir. Who else do you want me to sit in the garage forequarters and unmarked when he goes past? I can pull out. Then I can be lead vehicle use can be round the corner on the 689 down toward Howden. Roger. Just think we could all hang round the back of the garage. That works even better. I'm probably going to have to go front, aren't it? The high dues. Yes, sir. I'll go vehicle one, go on marked, and then we can hide the RV behind me. <laughs> Jacko's going to be lead car, using his unmarked Beamer to hide the marked cars behind him and moving in front of the hired van when the T-Pack takes place. If he is going this route to go through the stage over the next five minutes. We're now looking to utilise a, a preemptive box. The difficulty you've got is we're in big vehicles, so it's about being tight and hiding behind each other and getting the box tight but this is what we train for and if we get it right which we usually do they'll be filling the pants and uh, we'll be filling the cells happy days it's coming your way now there's a third vehicle i think it's on its own past us now move out move out move out The key is to get all three police cars in position without them being seen by the driver of the hired van. Can you just get bumper to bumper with me? We might get it before the roundabout. The vehicle we're after has just gone past us, so we're hoping to try and get a box on imminently. They're now out of town and the road's clear of oncoming traffic. It's time to tea pack. Move out, move out, move out. Jacko speeds past the vehicle before moving in front to block its path. While his colleagues pull up behind and alongside it, it's a textbook T-Pack. The interceptor's plan has worked perfectly. The driver knows he has nowhere to go. <laughs> Nicking him is one thing. But it's what's in the back of the hired van that's more important to Jacko. I've got my gloves. Up until now, all the information they've been given about the driver and van is spot on. And the same seems to be true about the amounts of drugs involved. There are bags and bags of vacuum packed cannabis. It's a canny half. More than a bit that you like, isn't it? Yeah. In both the blue plastic sack and the suitcase, it's a humongous haul of this Class B drug. The colossal amount. Alea, could we request recovery of this vehicle, please? The amount of drugs they've found is surprising, as is the price. Five pence? <laughs> <laughs> He's not charging the going rate, I wouldn't suggest. Five pence. To be fair, it might be on personal use. <laughs> <laughs> Not a chance. Jacko's confiscated huge amounts of substances over the years, but this haul is a biggie, even for a veteran interceptor like him. I've seized a lot of cannabis in my time, but I personally have never seen it packed in this way. That's vacuum packed, so you're literally cramming as much as you possibly can in there, and there's and it weighs a fair amount. It's obviously a decent operation. The driver's been arrested for possession with intent to supply controlled drugs. I believe he's in the subject of being drug tested as well because he looks under the influence. We need to download his phone, gather as much evidence as we can. The package will be prepared and CID will be picking this one up in the morning. I think we'll relish getting this one because this isn't your ten a penny drug dealer. From start to finish, this job couldn't have gone smoother. Textbook stop. No damage, no injuries, happy days. And we've gotten a, a massive amount of drugs back. 
I couldn't begin to tell you how much that's worth, to be perfectly honest. I would say it's in the realms of tens of thousands of pounds, if not beyond that. The driver of the van was arrested for possession with intent to supply, and the investigation continues. It's been a fantastic job, taking over 10 kilos of high-grade cannabis off the streets and disrupting the supply chain. This is one of the biggest seizures for the team in the past 12 months. Somebody's taken the call, been switched on enough to pass it to the appropriate person. They've done enough with it. So, low, we've got the, the glory at the roadside. It's a massive team effort. It's a really, really good result. It takes a lot of time and effort to fully train a police dog. So, for the handlers that put the hard work in... Good lad! There's no better feeling than when their dog is the difference between a criminal getting away... Get yourself on your knees, don't run! ..or getting locked up. Don't run, stay still! <laughs> we spend a lot of time training our dogs. And when they actually go out there and they catch someone that would have most definitely escaped had it not been for the dog... Fight. It's an ultimate buzz. It's a, it's a great team effort between the both of us. Get on your knees! Just to see the look on the face when they're confronted by the canine teeth snarling at them. <laughs> They've got no option. You know, if they decide they're going to run, they're going to get caught. If they decide they're going to fight, they're going to get bit. So the only option they've got is to give up, really, and just surrender. Whereas when they're faced with an officer, they can take the chances. They might decide to continue another runoff, or they may decide to have a pop, but it doesn't happen very often when they've got a dog in front of them. It's early evening and dog handler Justin Moffat has been called to a potential break-in. It's a report from a building site in Norton. There's a male with a hoodie who's trying to dismantle one of the CCTV cameras. But I think the info has come from a monitoring company which is down south somewhere. A man has been caught on CCTV in a building site pulling a camera off its mount and hurling it to the floor. They're after the fuel out of the plant equipment and sometimes bigger stuff again, you know, construction stuff. So we'll keep an open uh, line till we get there. Goals. Justin joined the force way back in 1990, when England still had a decent football team. And his vast experience means he knows his patch intimately, even a building site on the edge of town. It's a bit of an awkward site to get to in so much it's set back off the main road quite a bit. We'll turn our lights off when we get to the bottom of this road because people will see us coming from a mile away. Um, and there's vast amount of land out the back. So really it's just to go to the site, see if there's anything untoward, see if the CCTV company can give us any more and go from there really. As he approaches the site, a woman flags Justin down. Hello. Hello. I've just come down to see if there was any security because I've just seen a blue van driving up there through right. one of the panels is missing from the fence and he's gone in. Now he's up to no good. He's got his drove up to your lights. Right. I'll go and have a look there. Then yeah, we've had a call to the site actually. Okay, love. Thanks. Cheers. The woman seen two men getting out of a van and going into the building site through a gap in the fence. It's fairly urgent. The uh, unit that's going to the building site at Norton. Uh, I've just been told there's a van with no lights. Have, has driven into the car park near the doctor's surgery and males have got out. Justin and Elsa now have to find two men and the van. In the pitch black site, they've not gone far when he hears something in the distance. Dogs have got sounds of an angle grinder on site. There's a blue Fiat. Uh, there's a male with an angle grinder. He hasn't seen me yet. About 50 yards away, someone appears to be using an angle grinder to cut into a container. Units here, urgently. It's time for Justin and his dog Elsa to make their move. Police with the dog! Stand still! No! Get on your knees, no! Get on your uh, knees, both of you! Uh, Show us your hands! Uh, Lie uh, on the floor! Uh, uh, Stay there! Do not move! Uh, I'll deploy this dog! Uh, uh, 
Dogs, I've got two detained. I need an urgent unit here now. Yes, send it on the hurry up. Justin's got two men, but he isn't able to make the arrest on his own. I've got two detained. I can't approach them unless I go with the dog. I've got a van that'll need recovering if you can start jacking that up. They're trying to break into the cabin with an angle grinder. Stay where you are and you'll be all right. Other officers are on their way, but they're finding it hard to locate Justin in the middle of the pitch black field. The street is where we think the site is, but we can't see anything. It's just a climb a fence. Though not long after, they do manage to find him. Good girl. Tried to break into the cabin, so that'll do for now till we find out exactly what the crack is. Be a temp burglary, I would have thought. The two suspected burglars are continuing to behave themselves, just as well for the two-legged cops as they did for Elsa. The hardest part is getting them out of the site and back to a place where the van can pick them up. From a dog handler's point of view, this job couldn't have gone any better. Oh, yes, yes, okay. It's brilliant when you turn up as a dog unit and get people that you would not normally catch. If I'd have been on my own with no dog, they'd have legged it and would, potentially would have missed one or both of them. As it is, she's done her job brilliantly well. She's been vocal, telling them that they're there and they've both surrendered straight away. Absolutely outstanding job. Nobody's had to be bitten, which is another bonus. And they've both been arrested for no injuries. I've obviously witnessed them trying to break into the cabin, so we've got absolute fences there. Um, brilliant job, solved, solved another crime. It's always uh, a good feeling to have. There's been one downside to this otherwise textbook job. Justin and the other officers are going to have to do some laundry when they get home. Never polish your boots before you come on duty, cos I'm absolutely up to the eyes. But happy dog handler is a dirty dog handler. While his colleagues take the two suspected burglars off to the nick, Justin has a route round their van while he waits for the recovery truck. Maybe he's got a particularly stubborn bolt on his garden shed he needs removing, I don't know. Even the outside of the van suggests nefarious activity. They've obscured the number plates from wood, front and back, so that nobody's been able to give a reg number if they've seen it going onto the site. If it hadn't been for that nurse, to be fair, that told us they were there, these lot had got away, probably. If I can find her again, I'll thank her very much. Justin's colleagues have radioed through. Now they've confirmed the identity of the two men. The uh, father and son who were notorious criminals of the uh, of the patch. A little way off their uh, beat tonight, but um, nevertheless, uh, the normal standard is that they get caught, and sure enough, they've been caught again. So if it doesn't make the interceptors, it'll make the world's dumbest criminals. So fantastic. The two men were later convicted of attempted burglary and going equipped to steal. The father received a 12-week suspended prison sentence, a community order and a £115 victim surcharge. His son received a six-month community order and a £20 victim surcharge for the same offences. Justin's had a good night, but reckons it's his dog Elsa who deserves the credit. You know, her presence alone has stopped them from fleeing. They've seen her, thought, we're not going to uh, fight with her. And, and you saw they gave themselves up straight away. So, yeah, full marks to her. She, she's won the day today. Still to come, a night on the town turns nasty. Kind of people out and about in the town with CS gas. As a doorman gets attacked. With a dodgy spray. It's an illegal weapon in the UK, well done. It's a busy Saturday night in Middlesbrough, and while the majority of revellers are having a good time and more importantly behaving themselves, interceptor Liam Sewell has received a call about a man in the town who's carrying something very dangerous. We've got a report, a couple of bobbies of the driving down Albert Road. Someone's flagged them down, quite disturbing. Report a male with a CS gas canister. The bobbies have seen this male suspect run off. Described as a uh, five foot seven, slim build with short hair. So it's going to be a bit of a needle in the haystack, but we've got CCTV looking because, you know, we're kind of people out and about in the town with CS gas. As Liam Blue lights it towards the town centre, an alarming update comes through. The suspects just attacked a doorman with the spray. I've got the uh, spray to the town centre. Head 
Yeah. 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 Dogs on route. Liam's first to get to the bar where the alleged attacker has gone, and he's being held by the door staff. Which one? The chap who's gone in the pub? Here we go. Quick word with you, mate. Quick word with you, kid. Stick it over there. You've got him, David. Right, mate, listen. You under arrest, all right? What for? Being an impression of a firearm. A firearm? It's alleged that you've sprayed someone in the face with it, mate. All right. What's happening? Yo, on, you shouldn't have, Saturday night would be like a party. The lad's swiftly in cuffs and is given a quick pat down. They will give him a full search back at the nick. Listen, mate, sure you don't have to say anything, but I'm a defence supplementary question, so which you let rely on part. And if you do say, maybe give me the evidence, all right? The lad's safely in the back of the van. Liam now needs to find out what happened and gather some evidence. Got yeah. the canister. So, yeah, I'll make the boys be locked up, but we haven't got the canister. It's been dropped outside the pub. Chances are another party goes picked it up. But, you know, we've got this dangerous offender off the streets and uh, we'll get fixed up with the doorman who's been sprayed. Mate, we was inside there, right? Yeah. Fighting, trying to get him with pepper spray me all over my face. Yours. Mate, what was he wearing? I, I just need to see him. I know you can't, mate, because it might go ID procedures later on. Yeah, Two guns. Taking them off, sprayed me all over. Couldn't you breathe? It's CCTV, mate, but I'll tell you one thing, man, is it? Mm. All right, mate. You. Start getting that burnt off then, the CCTV and stuff, and someone will be round to get up a statement off you. Cheers, mate. All right, you. Take care. Liam sees all sorts while at work, but this one is a bit of a shocker. He's obviously on a night out, you know, where's he got this CS gas from? You know, it's classed as a firearm, he shouldn't have possession of it and then to go and use it, you know, it's, it's really is taking it up a level. You know, people have scraps in the town hall. If you're going to go out causing trouble in the town, the doorman are going to fling you out, aren't they? As Liam arrives at Middlesbrough Nick, one of his colleagues radios through, saying that he may still have the gas on him. Yeah, we're going to search him, because some suggesting it might be down his kegs. So we'll have a quick look at that when we get in. <laughs> as soon as he sits down, the gas canister is clear to see. What's that in your sock, kid? Right, so we're going to seize that off you, mate, all right? Saturday night, feel like the party. Pepper spray. So it's a, an illegal weapon in the UK, well that and people buy them off the internet, it's just uh, usually get them from the continent. It's just uh, a quite a strong potent pepper spray not what we use. It's classed as a firearm in the UK, so he's been arrested for possession of a, a firearm. That's a serious charge, but this lad doesn't seem too bothered. I'm 27 years young. I'm from T not the seaside, and I'm five foot eleven. Wow. The suspect's in no fit state to give a statement, so he's put in a cell to sleep it off. Despite his inebriated state, Liam's surprised by how lightly he's taking it. <laughs> I mean, the lad doesn't really give a damn, does he? He's, he's just having a laugh. He also seems under the impression he can order a takeaway from the cells. Yeah, and the chicken korma. Yeah. With egg fried rice. Yeah. And also, I'm getting an all-day breakfast with sausage beans, mushrooms. And potatoes. Like some. Watch it, mate. It, it just shows you the measure of the person, you know. It just doesn't surprise you that he has committed this type of offence. Gonna be looking at a serious charge there, you know, possession of a firearm there, and he's used it. He is out on a drink with his can of CS gas. You know, that's the measure of the man, and this is the safest place for him, you know. The man later pleaded guilty to assault and possession of a weapon designed or adapted for the discharge of CS gas. He was ordered to pay £250 in compensation and received a 13-month suspended prison sentence. Catch more police interceptors over on Five Spike next. How did one life-changing week change their lives forever? We revisit previous swaps to find out in New Rich House Poor House at nine. First, haggling for bargains and keeping this week's food bill on budget. Get today's deals in you shop smart, save money. Next. Police interceptors. <laughs> The pride of the northeast. Locked up, protect the motor vehicle. Yeah, it's been run. And scourge of the criminal class. We are, man. Open the door now. Hands out. Hands out. 
We're up close and personal with Durham and Cleveland's crime fighting elite. In pursuit, off road, lethal list. And in the air. We've got a group of five runners, five runners, Nation Road now. With their crack firearms team. Oh, please! Oh! And formidable dog unit. Stand still, please, you dog! In the trenches. For the war on crime. Strap in. I am in pursuit. You're riding with the interceptors. We'll be filling the pumps. Stay there! We'll be filling the cells. Coming up. A red light runner causes carnage. We're going to have to remove the passenger from the vehicle. It's smoking. A hunt for a runaway. Where's the driver gone? Over the top or not? On the back. And it all kicks off in a car park. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. When it comes to pursuits, interceptors know that safety has to come first. Beagle has gone offside carriageway, offside carriageway. I'm not following. Blue lights off, blue lights off. Because they know that fleeing drivers have just one thing on their minds. They're not going to slow down. They're going to run past at 70, 80 miles an hour. And the last thing you want is a kid getting wiped out by a car that's got no regard for anybody else's safety. The big out is smoking, I think he's losing power. Crash, crash, crash. <laughs> Interceptor Liam Sewell's out on the night shift. He's hoping for some good fortune when it comes to catching villains on this significant date. It's Friday the 13th tonight, favourite night shift to do, because they're so unlucky for plenty of people. So we're going to work all through the night. I've got Titan and Louie on board. Hopefully we'll get some uh, decent jobs to get stuck in now. Dog handler Liam's favourite part of the job is bagging burglars and being involved in pursuits. And tonight it seems that Lady Luck is on his side. A colleague is behind a silver Nissan that has lit up his onboard number plate recognition camera. Got a unit behind a car that's got no insurance, no air is registered off-road. So we believe it's up to no good, they're going to try and put a stop in. And if it makes off, we can assist with their pursuit. The officer suspects that the driver of the Nissan is a serial offender, currently banned from driving, who was involved in this pursuit just over two months ago. He drove at more than 70 miles per hour on residential streets before taking the car off-road onto a playing field. He was nicked for this dangerous driving and shouldn't be behind the wheel. Liam's colleague's in a marked car. And as he follows at a safe distance, it seems the driver has spotted him. He bangs on the blues, but the Nissan boots it. Running a red light. And then straight through another one. The pursuit's now on the open road, and the driver is now hitting over 70 in a 40 zone. Liam's a few streets away and hoping to head off the fleeing motor. Here it is. The Nissan's now heading towards another set of red lights, and a car's coming into the junction from the left-hand side. It's a serious high-speed smash. The officer behind quickly apprehends the driver. Liam is just a few hundred yards away and is the next on scene. Got him. Yeah, well, yeah. You got him fucked. 
Now his priority is to find out if the other people involved in the crash are OK. Stay with your car, darling. Stay with your car. And update control. Yeah, Flight 9 out there. I'm with him. We've got, um, it's crashed into a white Audi. The front seat passengers looks like she's in some distress of the actual vehicle that was failing to stop. And the uh, driver of the Audi also looks like she's in a bit of distress. The driver of the car, which was hit, is shaken, but otherwise seems OK. Lima's main concern is now the passenger in the Nissan. Are you injured, sweetie? <laughs> Your chest? Yeah, my passengers complained of uh, chest pain, conscious and breathing. Point nine, I'm going to have to remove the passenger from the vehicle. It's smoking. With the engine smoking and potentially ready to blow, Liam needs to remove the woman from the car immediately. I'm going to have to get you out, darling. But the door is wedged shut and they can't budge it. Ideally, they'd leave her in the car until the paramedics arrive. But with the engine smoking, Liam can't take any chances. Just in case, darling, you shift your cross as careful as you can. Good lass. Thankfully, they get her out safely. And while the fire service deal with the smoking engine, Liam can help his colleague with the arrested driver. No insurance. It'll be easier to stop. This is what happens when you don't stop. He's saying he doesn't have any driving licence or documents. And he's smashed some old woman into the street furniture. You know, his missus in the passion seat complaining of chest pain. We got out the car because there's a bit of smoke. Better safe than sorry. Doesn't look like there's anyone seriously injured. It was a stroke of luck on Friday the 13th, but the driver hasn't seriously harmed himself or anyone else. We've literally just left him like that. Um, I think he's been removed from the car and that's it. He's complaining of some back pain. And Liam doesn't have much sympathy for this reckless and dangerous driver. He's passed his breath test, but he is a disqualified driver, so he's going to have no documents for the car, no insurance, and that's why he's made off tonight. Just absolute bottom feeders, you know, putting other people at risk. There's a lady there and a lovely Audi. She's in distress. His girlfriend's in distress. And obviously he's in a bit of discomfort complaining about his back, so hopefully he'll get a bit of jail time. That's what he deserves. That's where he needs to be. The driver was later convicted of dangerous driving, driving while disqualified and without insurance. He was sent to prison for 17 months, banned from driving for 44 months, and ordered to pay a victim surcharge of £140. All three people involved in the crash later made a full recovery from their injuries. For the earlier incident, he was given an additional four-month jail term suspended for two years and an 18-month driving ban. He's made off from police. He's a disqualified driver. He's got no insurance. It's caused all that destruction. It's caused the lady of the Audi a lot of distress and shock, and he's ruined her car, probably wrote it off. He's wrote his own car off, and he's put his girlfriend in hospital, and himself, just because he didn't want to stop and because he chose to drive. So I always think, you know, they've got a ch choice. It's up to them to make the right decisions. And just pull over. Still to come. Do the red lights, left, left, left. A snowy pursuit with a slippery customer. Vehicle's lights out, wrong side of the road. Speed is 8-0. A high-speed okay. stop on the A1. Bogs on, bogs on. Slow it down, bring him across, slow it down. And Liam hunts down a late-night burglar. Police here, dog. Stand up now and show yourself. Stand up. Twenty-four hours a day, seven days a week, the interceptors are ready for anything. Things seldom pan out the way you expect them to. You want to go to a job and want it to be nice and neat, and dead straightforward and simple, but that seldom happens. Not sure what's going on. I've got one of the tables kicking off with us. Experience has taught them that even the simplest seeming incident is being good as gold. Yeah. Not... Can suddenly become complicated. In that bag. What? And dangerous. We've got what I can only describe as an improvised explosive device. And the one thing we expect in this job is the unexpected. It's early afternoon, and interceptor Jimmy Greaves is following up a tip off about a dodgy driver and suspected drug user. 
We're just heading to Hartlepool to act on a bit of intelligence that the police have received in relation to a motor vehicle that's been driven around with no insurance, but more importantly, the driver is believed to be dropping off drugs at one of the local gyms. Ten-year veteran Jimmy is a big fan of heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua and knows that he might have to bide his time before making the knockout blow. Yeah, I just plotted up now. We're waiting for this vehicle. The intelligence would suggest that he comes at specific times. There's only one way in and one way out, so we're hoping that he comes past and then we can quickly get out and intercept him. 40 minutes later, Jimmy's patience pays off. As the suspect car, a dark blue Fiesta, drives past. This is a vehicle where the intelligence is linked to, so. Jimmy blocks the exit route in case the driver tries to make off. Hey, buddy. Someone turned your engine off a sec. Is this your car, is it? Hey. Is it insured to you? Well, I've just uh, bought this. You've just bought it? Ah, right, OK. Yeah. Have you managed to get it insured oh. yet? Well, no. All right, OK. No problem. Just want to give us a couple of seconds. We'll get some details off you then, all right. The driver is the man Jimmy was after. I've got a vehicle stopped. Is there a unit fee that can come and assist me, please? He'll check out the possible driving charges first before searching the man who he suspects may have drugs on him. Have you got a full licence, have you? Well, no. you've, got, you've not got a licence either. Oh, it's getting better, isn't it? Uh, Honesty seems to be this man's policy, but that's not going to stop his car being seized. In the front of my vehicle so I can take you through the paperwork and stuff that we need to go through. You can come back and get anything you need out of here in a minute. The first part of the tip-off has proven true. The man is driving illegally. And now interceptor Lee Wilson has arrived, Jimmy can investigate the second part, that he is carrying drugs. If one of you wants to keep an eye on him just while yeah. I, I search him, I'll let him know yeah, that I'm doing worries, the search. Mate. Jimmy gets sniffer dog Gunner. Lee chats with the suspect, but will he be so honest? All right, if you've got anything on you now, all right, you're better off just being straight up front. No. If there's anything in the car, the dog will find it. Uh, You've definitely not no. got anything on you. No. The next stage, we'll be taking him for a strip search. Oh, they take me in? Yeah. We take him for a strip search. Um, we find whatever if you've got anything on you. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Right, right, right. Right, get you on. A little bit on me, that's it. Nobody in the car. Nobody in the dog. He's got some gear on him, he Has he? Yeah. He's just admitted to my colleague uh, that he's got some. Uh, Drugs on him, so we're going to get him out and deal with that. The intel is spot on, and he comes clean to having a bag of white powder, but claims there's nothing else in the car. OK, you're also under arrest for possession of a Class A drug yeah. at this minute in time, OK? Yeah. Yeah. True to form, the man is telling the truth, and no more drugs are found. But in the time it took Gunner to have a nose through the motor, the driver has failed a drug wipe. Within minutes of us doing the test, very strong indication that he's openly admitted he's took cocaine in the last 24 hours. Not only has he uh, got Class A controlled drugs on him, um, he's also a drug driver. It's been a very successful job. An unlicensed, uninsured and drugged up driver has been taken off the road. But just as they're about to pack up and head off to the Nick, the man's family turn up and one of them is particularly unhappy. The man isn't pleased with how he thinks his father's been treated. Yeah. So why are we looking up for coming to the gym? Down. 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 All right, and you've come over here being like this. Oh, no, There's no need to be like that. So it might be something I've done. It's right. nothing to do with what you've done, unless you've done something that you haven't told us. Hi, yeah. Uh, Ding. Go away. On your back. Go away. You. Hey, right. This is the last morning. No, you're going to get locked up. I don't want me on camera. I don't care. Move. I don't want him on Move. camera. I don't Move. care. Get in the car. Just go. It's now you and me. Just go. Move. Move. Dickhead. Move. Keep it going. You're going to get yourself locked up now. What? So you get locked up. Get in the car. Get in the car. Dickhead. Right, one more. And get locked in. That's your last chance. All right? Come on. 
it. You're just making the situation worse. Finally, the man appears to have calmed down. But shortly after getting into the car, it kicks off again. Despite being pepper sprayed and tasered, he continues to resist. So Lee deploys the taser again. Get on your get get on your floor. Dogs need assistance at this car park immediately, please. Finally, they get the cuffs on him. The first male we arrested, his family's turned up, his son's turned up attack officers. He's been tasered twice and sprayed. Need some units here to get rid of them. A straightforward arrest has quickly snowballed into something far more dangerous, meaning Lee had to use pepper spray and a taser to restrain the extremely aggressive suspect. Some sort of conversations went on in the car, and then I seen a turn, and the male instantly became aggressive in the car, come out, and I took the earliest opportunity to spray him with Parva, which is an incapacitant spray, and it didn't have any effect on him whatsoever. The best way to bring that male down to a level where he could dealt with safely was for me to uh, discharge a taser. At which point he's went to the ground. Put your arms out now! Put your arms out! Put your back. He's then become aggressive again, start to resist again, and I realised one of the barbs had come out, so I've discharged the taser a second time, and it was successful. Stay Ultimately, that's brought him down to a level where we can control him in a safe manner. Even once secured in the back of the van, the man continues to be aggressive. Hey, you're under arrest for a free, you don't have to say. And he's still being aggressive, not uh, head the cage. These are the type of people I would deal with, but ultimately, got duty to care to them and other members of the public and ourselves, and he's, uh, he's now under arrest. The headbanger's been taken to hospital to get checked out while Jimmy takes his dad back to the Nick. Yeah, you've got the keys. Let's get out of here, then. Back at the station, the original suspect was booked in and locked up. He was convicted of driving under the influence of drugs and driving with no licence or insurance. He was ordered to pay £235 in fines and costs and banned from driving for three years. No further action was taken in relation to the white powder. His son was later convicted of a Section 4 public order. He received a 10-day rehabilitation order and was ordered to pay £700 in fines and costs. Thankfully for Jimmy and his colleagues, this explosive incident had a successful and safe conclusion. You're in a small town where people have access to phones and before you know it, we've got family members who are very emotional turning up at the scene and it just changed the whole dynamics of that particular incident. And thankfully, we had enough of us to be able to deal with that. We just need to look after ourselves and make sure that we go home safe because that's, that's what we want to do. Um, we're here for a job, but at the same time, we, we want to go home nice and safe as well. It's a bleak midwinter evening and the sub-zero temperatures are making life difficult for interceptor Chris Green. Yeah, I've had a bit of uh, bad weather tonight. There's been an earlier snowstorm which has left a lot of the side roads quite slippy and, and icy, temperatures below freezing. So it does make it a little bit tricky for us trying to get the jobs in a hurry because obviously we've got to get there in one pace and the added risk of <coughs> us being involved in an accident is quite real. Dog handler Chris has experienced a fair few frozen northeast nights in his 17 years on the job. And tonight, he'll be on top form behind the wheel. It's a quite a challenging conditions, and obviously, if you get into a pursuit or anything similar, it raises the risks quite significantly. These are four-wheel drive, thankfully, so it gives us a bit more grip on the road, but you've still got to be mindful that you're only one patch of ice away from ending up on the kerb, so... A couple of hours into his shift, Chris gets a call to look out for a stolen Mazda, which was involved in a pursuit before giving his colleagues the slip. Another job over in Stockton, we're in Middlesbrough. I stole a Mazda 3. It's been sighted by a uh, being pursued. Some, by the sounds of a temporary loss at the moment. 
plotting off. Chris heads to a spot where he thinks the Mazda could be going, and ten minutes later, his hunch pays off. It's Mazda nice 3, isn't it? A Mazda has just pulled out in front. Now he needs to double check it's the same car that made off earlier. As he's in a marked dog van, he doesn't want to get too close and spook the driver into another pursuit. It's indicating. I'll <laughs> be amazed if it is. And amazingly, checks confirm it is the stolen motor. It is. Get off, get off, get off. The driver still seems unaware he has a cop car tailing him, but as Chris follows him down residential streets, the driver then clearly clocks the marked car in his rear view mirror, hits the gas, and speeds off on the icy roads. We've got the Storby Norton Road heading towards the town. Yeah, it's approaching St Mary's roundabout. Not one, not one. Taking the second, taking the second. Nelson Terrace. Speeds 4 0. Thankfully, the traffic is light on this freezing night as the stolen Mazda hammers straight through a red signal. Right, 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 Bishop Lane. As the fleeing driver's sticking to the main roads, the conditions aren't too bad. It's on Durham Road, speed is 4 0. But then he heads off into a narrow residential street. Zulu Whiskey Victor. Right, 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 right. Well, the road is more like an ice rink. This pursuit is becoming cause for concern. Eastbourne Road, it's right, 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 Cherry Gardens. And then the rampaging runaway ups the danger level again. Heading off road. The Mazda slips and slides across the snowy grass towards a narrow gateway. Not going to get through there. The compact car sneaks through the gap, taking out a wing mirror in the process, and Chris, in his slightly wider dog van, gingerly follows him through. Yeah, we've gone off the road, we're through onto. As Chris races to catch up, he speeds past the marked cop car, which has had a close encounter with the Mazda. Yeah, it's back on the north one. Chris is soon back on its tail. Speed is 5 0. So left, 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 Durham Road. Through the red lights, left, left, left. Alma Street, I believe it is. Now on a snowy dual carriageway, the car thief boots it to over 60 miles an hour and then tries another risky trick in his attempt to shift Chris. Vehicle's lights out, speed 6-0. Wrong side of the road, speed is 8-0. The reckless driver will clearly stop at nothing to get away, but the cops are closing in. An unmarked police car coming from the opposite direction joins Chris at the next junction. He soon has the Mazda in his sights and takes the loot. It's breaking left, 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 Norton Avenue. Okay, the runaway driver is back to his old tricks, swapping tarmac for turf in a desperate bid to escape. Going the off road, off the but what he doesn't know is that a third car is also lying in wait. Now they have enough vehicles to box in the stolen car. There's also 80 pounds of snarling German Shepherd ready to run if they decide to leg it. Now the Mazda driver once again repeats another trick he made earlier. The driver's gone back through the same gap Chris followed him through, and the pursuing X5 is too big. But the cops are now wise to his tactics. A fourth cop car is waiting the other side of the gap is straight on the runaway driver's tail. Chris takes a different route to try and trap the Mazda, but colleagues up ahead have another plan. Yeah, we'll put the stinger out and handle the They're planning to use a stinger, a strip of hollow nails thrown in front of a car to deflate its tires and bring it to a stop. An officer lies in wait, and as the Mazda passes... Stop, mate, stop. 
The plan works and it's a direct hit. As the Mazda turns a corner, the lead car closes in. But the car's been abandoned and someone's making a run for it. Yeah, stop running, stop running. Stop running. Chris and German Shepherd Ronnie are right behind and ready for action. Where's the driver gone? Over, over the top of us. Along the back. It's time for Ronnie to hunt down the runner. Interceptor Chris Green has been in pursuit of a stolen Mazda. Speed's 5-0, do the red lights, left, left, left. The fleeing driver has taken massive risks on the icy roads in a bid to get away. Heading off road. Vehicle's lights out, speed 6-0. But eventually, a successful sting brought the stolen motor to a stop. Stop, stop. Yeah, stop running, stop running. Two of the passengers have been caught, but the suspected driver has legged it. Where, where's the driver gone? Yeah. Over, over the top or not? Along the back. <laughs> the suspect has jumped a fence into a pitch black field. Chris's tracker dog Ronnie is the best chance they have of finding him. What's a drop on the other side? Oh, it's quite big for the dog, actually. With the fence nearly as tall as six foot three, Chris and a further drop on the other side, it's too risky to put Ronnie over, so he finds a lower section further up the street. Can I, can I help you, please? Ronnie heads off into the pitch black and immediately picks up a trail, can I, can I? which leads him to an industrial area surrounded by a large metal fence. His keenness to get in isn't the only indication that someone's been here. There's also a glove on one of the spikes at the top of the fence. Just for the dog's reaction here, I don't know if someone's actually gone over this fence. I just want to get some cops on this side. 484, can I come in? Do somebody just go around to the industrial side where the post office is, please? Just checking that area. But by the dog's reaction, s someone possibly been across this way, so I'm getting the unit to go around. We can't get over the fence, it's far too high. Chris and Ronnie head round to the main entrance of the compound. Our camera operator has been told to stay outside so as not to contaminate the trail. Ronnie's nose has been twitching all the way round, and once he's let loose inside, it doesn't take him long to find someone. Dog's got one. Right, chill your boots. Stop it. Oh. Ronnie. Out, good boy. Ronnie's straight off the suspect once Chris orders him to, but he's certainly made his mark. You locked up the special left him the vehicle, OK? Dangerous driving. Keep walking, keep walking. Turn around, turn around. Can you undo my please? Turn around, let's face the wall before you do anything. Yeah, he's gone over where I said he had the, the glove on the fence. Is his other one? He's still got his left glove on. When we first tracked where the driver went, the dog on the free track came to this corner of the fence. There was a glove on top. His left hand still has the matching glove on. Chris thinks the glove the suspect's wearing is the match to the one that he saw on the fence, which has now been removed. Dog's reaction was telling me he's gone over there. I had the units come in so there's no footprints, so I almost negated it. Anyway, I got the tracking line so I could conduct a thorough search of dog under control. Very satisfying to get the driver, because at one point I thought we'd actually missed him. So I've locked up fork here. Yeah? Well, Special theft of the motor vehicle. Yeah. Dangerous driving, failed to stop. You got a license? No. No license, no insurance, okay? What's this one called? Ronnie? Ronnie. Oh, yeah, this one. All right. Ronnie certainly earned his dog biscuits tonight. Yeah, Ronnie's a boy. When I first shouted up to say the dogs give me an indication that the fence this big, even I doubted myself that somebody could have got over. Cops had said, oh, there's no footprints, but it just goes to show. He knows. I've just got to trust him. Back to where it all began. Okay. Any cop on the ground will tell you they want a dog to come to the job, whether it be public order, whether it be for a search or a track, because they know how valuable they are. Done it for me again. Love you, big boy. 
following an investigation into the man Chris and Ronnie caught, Cleveland police were unable to prove that he was in fact the driver, so no further action was taken. No further action was taken against the two men believed to be the passengers. It's the start of the rush hour, and interceptors Carl Wood and Paul Jackson are blue lighting it to rendezvous with their colleagues. They're hoping to stop a car believed to be transporting drugs. We're just getting a bit of short notice. There's a car coming up into our area, having been down the Merseyside to collect the large quantity of drugs, we're told. But we understand it's northbound on the motorway, and we're looking to get our traffic cars plotted up nearby. So if we get the eyeball on it going past, we can do a preemptive box. We we'll surround the vehicle whilst in motion and force it to stop and not give it any chance to get away or discard any drugs. Veteran interceptor Jacko's been involved in his fair share of boxing in cars, otherwise known as T-Packs, and he knows exactly what to expect. We need to hide as best we can, see if we see it go by, staying together in a pod, with all three cars virtually bumper to bumper. So if the subject vehicle checks his mirror, he's not seen he's been followed by three X5s. And we're trying to use the element of surprise. While Jacko's an old hand at T-Packs, the opposite is true of his partner and driver, Carl, who's only recently passed his T-Pack course. Tonight's his first time in the box seat, and he's got a good mentor beside him. Stop here, stop here. Carl and Jacko plot up by a junction with the A1, along with the two other marked X5s who will be carrying out the T-Pack. They're waiting for the suspect motor, which is being tailed by an interceptor in an unmarked car. It's time to move out. Bumper to bumper, lads. Yes, yes, lots of the cops don't want to be spotted before they're ready to strike, so they drive in tight formation to hide from the suspect vehicle. But they seem to be doing it too well, as they're not being noticed by the rush hour commuters making their way home on this busy main road. Move over, man, you idiot! Jacko's words have the desired effect, and the trio of cop cars close in. Yep, so you think it is at the one mile mark board in the near side lane? Yeah, we've got it on there, uh, totally. Three lanes to the vehicles to cover. They're now fast approaching the Gulf, which is believed to be carrying drugs. Carl needs to get even tighter so the suspect doesn't realise he has a posse of cop cars on his tail. The commentary is quite delayed on the uh, uh, through by three, three. Up his backside, we don't want him to see us at the moment. Have we got lane three there? A T-Pack requires three police vehicles. One to get in front of the target car, one to go alongside, and one to block it in from behind. So they need a bit of wiggle room. And now the A1 has opened up to three lanes, the team are in a perfect spot. It's time to tee pack. Move out, move out, move out. Go then, go on. Go on then, he's going. Move out, move out, move out. Box on, box on. Carl pulls alongside the golf and stays tight to it, forcing it to the hard shoulder. Slow it down, bring him across, slow it down. Bring it across, stop, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, right yeah. Across. Yeah. Tight. The other two cars have blocked front and rear. It's been a textbook tee pack. Jacko has the driver cuffed in seconds, but one of the rear seat passengers is less compliant. The cops manage to open the other door and pull him out. They've got three men arrested. Pull him over. Yeah. Right, you've been detained at the present time. <clears throat> you really shouldn't have. Yes or no? Uh, simple yeah, answer. Yeah, are you simple? Where is it? Are you simple? Jimmy Pot then? Right. What? <laughs> They're expecting the car to have drugs in it, and Jacko spotted something. There is a small bag of cannabis in the car, so whose is that? Hey. 
That's yours. Carl's keen to look in a plastic bag on the back seat, if he can get it open. Do you know what won't do not? No. You're all of a fluster, aren't you? I am. Carl needs to calm down, and the bag's full of tranquilizers. About well, two dozen bottles of diazepam, 100 tablets in each. Yeah, it's on a prescription's control, you kind of just go and get it from a chemist. That's obviously yeah, a good little find. There's a couple of other quite large plastic bags as well in the back, which I'm quite keen to have a, have a look into. Are we going to move out, move out, move out? Well, let's. The car will be given a full search back at the Nick, along with the three suspects. Time for the interceptors to hit the road. One's got some cocaine on him. There's two small bags of cannabis and there's a carrier bag with about 200 and odd diazepam tablets in, which is a controlled drug, so it's a good result. There's a lot of fireworks in the car. It's not beyond the realms of possibility that they could conceal drugs in there and the, the smell of the gunpowder would disguise it, but we'll have a look. And if they haven't got any drugs in, we'll just let them off. In custody, the driver of the car failed a drug swipe and then failed to provide a specimen of blood. He was convicted and fined £492, including costs and banned from driving for a year. He and the two passengers were also arrested for possession of Class C drugs and are still under investigation. We've stopped the car in rush hour on the A1 in darkness without metal on metal, without injury, and we've got three locked up before they realise what it and probably is. you put £6,000 worth of diazepam there. Them drugs are off the streets and we've got a drug driver off the roads as well, so we've had about 15 minutes to react to that. It's a really, really good job. I think everybody can be proud of themselves. And no one more so than Carl, who's made his T-Pack debut with a plot. A bit daunting at first, it's dark, half past five at night, roads are absolutely jam-packed full of commuters, a little bit of trepidation. Box on, box on. Anything that works out well you're happy with and um, quite, uh, quite pleased, pleased you with that, really. it. To, to get it under my belt and first one, off we go. Still to come, a fleeing suspect. On foot, two on foot. A late night search. Is this where you heard the noise? Yeah, I think so, I think so. And a chilly customer. Cold, well, you shouldn't go out thieving at the middle of the night. Could have been tucked up in a nice warm bed, couldn't you? Interceptor Liam Sewell is on the graveyard shift when a call comes in from a traffic car in Billingham, five miles north of Middlesbrough. We got dogs off to the offside. Another unit is in pursuit of a blue Citroen, which has failed to stop. Left, 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 Thames Avenue. It's gone right, right, right into King's Arm car park. The Citroen leaves the road and darts into a car park. It's going to come back out on the other side. Negative's off road, off road to the left. On foot, two on foot. And the two men in the car leg it into a field. Liam and his tracker dog Titan are still a way off. But fellow dog handler Justin Moffat and his dog Elsa are on scene and on the tail of the runners. Look, I need a distance. Can you come along towards the path? I think he's got one. I've got one in the garden, but I think there's another one going to ground. Justin's got there quite quickly with Elsa. He's deployed. He's got one detained in a garden, and there's one still outstanding in the woods. We'd have never found him without the dog. Definitely not that they got away. Liam arrives to find one of the suspects in cuffs. We've got one detained. We believe the one's in one of the gardens down here. Another officer is at the back of the houses, and he's heard noises in one of the gardens. Now, mate, I'm literally out the front of them uh, gardens that you're at the rear of, um, the Kev. If you get any um, gardens, mate, if you count along, I'll come in there from the front. Three or four or fifth along, mate, from the cut. Yeah, Roger. I'll see if I can get in. Liam spies his colleague's torch behind the house and heads into the back garden. Ali, I'm just at the front of the garden that you're shining your torch into now. Is this where you heard the noise? Yeah, I think so. I think so. And Titan is straight on to someone lying down in a flower bed. Right, mate, police your dog. Stand up now and show yourself. Stand up. 
Yeah, we've got one male in this garden. Stand back, take a step back, mate. Step forward. Stand still. Put your arms around your back. Down. Go in, come round, Liam, you alright? Yeah, if you can pop round. The late night gardener is playing dumb. What's it for? You're locked up, mate. Suspicion of fail to stop in that vehicle, all right? What vehicle? The one that's parked out there. Nobody. Right, don't walk around, mate. Sit on right. me. Yeah, no worries. I'm not going to because the dog's a bit hype at the moment. I'm just waiting for him to settle down, all right? I'm going to step forward and cuff you. OK? Information's now come through which sheds light on why the two men legged it from the car. So a few reports coming in of two lads in a dark vehicle breaking into the vans. They've been on a bit of a crime spree around Billingham area. So, brilliant result. Two lads in custody for burglary breaks the garages and fail to stop. While his colleague deals with the suspect burglar, Liam decides to see if he's dumped anything in the garden. There's a mobile phone there, so we're going to seize that. I hope this is a stolen phone from one of the addresses of vehicles that's being broken into. It'll just link him to the offence. If it's his iPhone, he's not going to leave it there, is he, in the middle of the night? Yeah, I've been back in search where I found him, and there's an iPhone on the floor that he's discarded. Liam returns to find Justin with the man he caught, who's now getting gobby. Pure job works. Don't swear, don't you? Oh, and I swear at you, like you dav. You can loosen these cuffs or what? No. No. Because you're effing and jeffing. Yeah, could you? Because the cuffs are tight. Well, they're tight for a reason. Behave yourself and stand still. Otherwise, we'll put you on the floor so you can't kick off again. Oh, put me on the floor. It's got a bit of a mucky mouth. So just behave yourself. Well, There's no like wrong a, with those. Try and act like an adult. Oh, okay. I am acting like an adult, but well, you won't lose really. enough. I'm pissed off no one. Right, well, that's why you're running through people's gardens when you've abandoned the car, still full of stolen property. No one. I'm going to smile at you when I give it all back. I don't think you will, son. Are you? Abandon all you. Stop, stop swearing. No, because the van's... The van's not there for your pleasure. The van's coming to take you away. Yeah. Right. But, well, yeah, and exactly. I want to get in to cold. So, so it'll do it on our time. Well, you shouldn't go out thieving in the middle of the night, then, should you? Huh? Thieving? You could have been tucked up with a nice warm bed, couldn't you? Yeah. Do you need the heat and cranking up petal at custody? Oh, hey. you think further. This chilly chap gets his wish. He and his suspected partner in crime are soon in the back of a warm van. Oh, oh mind you. Good petal. Good. I'll let you sit down. And while they thaw out, Liam has a look through the car they ditched. Someone's mountain bike in there, there's a guitar, there's someone's work tools. That's someone who's going to get up for work tomorrow morning and not have any kit to do his job. It's just a nice result to get these two lads locked up. They're just an absolute pain in the backside, you know, scum of the earth, going around breaking people's houses. And if you just have a look on the seat here, we have got the big massive machete. You know, these are the type of people that we're dealing with, you know. And then you've got them locked up complaining at the cold because it's a bit frosty. Well, get no sympathy from me. The lad found by Justin later pleaded guilty to three counts of theft and was sentenced to 24 weeks in prison. His colleague, who Liam found lying down in the garden, pleaded guilty to three counts of theft and was sentenced to 40 hours community service and ordered to pay a total of £135. Good bit of teamwork, really. You know, we've got traffic, I've spotted a vehicle with no lights on. Got an ARV unit we've got behind it. The vehicle's failed to stop. I've had two lads bail out into the bushes. One foot to one foot. Justin's been on top of it straight away. Ailsa's caught one in one garden and she's carried on searching the woodland. And I've come around the front and searched the next gardens along and caught one in the back. So, good result for Titan and Ailsa tonight. He had a bit of barky barky at him. And um, we've got two burglars in custody. Can't ask for more, really. A new police interceptors kicks off law and disorder season here on Channel 5 next Monday at 8. In just a few moments after a quick news update, we take to the skies for our brand new documentary, The Jumbo Jet 50 Years in the Sky. While over on 5 Spike next, holiday fever goes to some tourists' heads in new fights, camera action.